Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this presentation of OVC Football on ESPN+. We're at Roy Stewart Stadium in Murray, Kentucky for today's matchup featuring the 25th ranked Murray State Racers and the Tennessee State Tigers. Hello, everyone. I'm Lacey Hawthorne, welcoming you to our broadcast of today's game. Following two huge road wins at SEMO and Tennessee Tech, the Racers return home with a 3-0 record and a number 25 national ranking. It is the first time since the 2011 season that the Racers have been ranked on the top 25 poll. On the other side, Tennessee State is looking for its second victory of the season following a victory over Eastern Illinois. Let's take a look at the series history presented by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. Today marks the 31st matchup between the Racers and the Tigers, with the Racers leading the series 17-13. Their last matchup took place on October 12, 2019 in Nashville, where the Racers won 31-17. Now let's take a look at the keys to the game presented by Delta Dental, starting with the host Racers. Offensively, they must win the time of possession. Murray State's time of possession has greatly improved this year, and they've held onto the ball the most in their first two matchups. Despite last Sunday's win, the Racers lost the time of possession battle to Tennessee Tech 25 minutes to 35, so they will look to flip that in their favor in today's game. Defensively, look for the Racers to continue making plays. Murray State's defense has gotten off to its best start in years thanks to players on all three levels stepping up to make impact plays when they matter most. This has resulted in the Racers' defense getting 9 team sacks and 10 turnovers. As for the Tigers, offensively they must capitalize on trips to the red zone. Although the Tigers have scored on 9 of 10 trips into the red zone this season, only 4 of those have resulted in touchdowns. Two of their games have been decided by one possession and the Tigers would like to put touchdowns on the board instead of field goals. Defensively, stopping the run will be the priority. The Racers' offensive attack has featured a renaissance in their rushing attack, spearheaded by senior Rodney Castile and freshman Demonte Witherspoon. Witherspoon, in particular, has become a star early in his career, highlighted by a two-touchdown performance at Tennessee Tech last week. As such, the Tiger defense will need to limit their impact. Finally, let's take a look at the conference standings presented by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Entering today, Murray State shares first place in the OVC alongside Jacksonville State, with both teams still undefeated. Austin P occupies third at 2-1, while Tennessee State is in a four-way tie for fourth at 1-2. That's it for pregame. Coming up next, Neil Bradley and Josh McKeel will have the call for Murray State and Tennessee State. You're watching OVC Football on ESPN+. Plus. Apply by April 30th for your chance to hunt elk right here in Kentucky. 25 and each home in honor of Dennis Jackson Day as we are set. It'll be Zayden Weber to kick it off. And back deep for Tennessee State, Daron Johnson and Vincent Perry. It will be Johnson, and they do make one change back there, I believe, and like that is Jalen Rouse will be on the far hash mark. This is going to be a kickoff. It's going to go about eight yards deep in the end zone. It'll be down there. It'll be a touchback. Tennessee State will bring it out, and we are underway here on this gorgeous day for football at Stewart Stadium. STSU takes the field again. We've talked about their quarterback before, Isaiah Green. Does a great job of managing the offense, does his job of distributing the football to their playmakers. And again, a very pass-heavy offense that TSU brings into Roy Stewart Stadium today. Tennessee State's offensive line, they've allowed 10 sacks and 26 tackles for loss in three games. The quarterback, Davion Bryant, or rather Isaiah Green is the, the main quarterback. He is 46 for 82. Thrown one interception, two touchdowns, a 56% completion rate. Man in motion to the far side, bit of a low snap. Green hands it off up the middle. It's a nice run out to around the 35, 36 yard line. That's 11 yards on the play for Starling. Alec Long with the tackle for the Racers. Yeah, the only thing we thought to come out throw the football that time, just right off the left guard, right up the middle, pick up of 11. Get a first and 10 on the uh, TSU 31. At the 36 yard line. Make that the 36. Green works out a shotgun. Twins to the left. Single wide out to the right. Fakes the handoff. Throws across the middle. It's caught. 
And if that caught tackle isn't made by the Racers, that's probably going to be six. Sylvon Turner with the tackle and the catch by Zaire Thornton. Yeah, Thornton had man-to-man -man coverage, Neil, and you're right. If he was able to catch that on that slant pattern and was able to break that tackle, it was off to the races, but uh, brought him down. But that does move it past midfield, first and 10 on the Raiders, 46. Looking very good out of the gate. It's Tennessee State. They're going to go twins to the left, single wide out to the right. Starling will be... The running back here, they're going to show pistol. We're a minute in at Tennessee State rolling in their first two plays. They'll bring a man from right to left. He'll set up as a wing to the left side. Staying with the pistol set. It's a snap. Handoff goes to Starling. Off tackle left side. Has some room. There's, racers are going to give up a five-yard game. But there's going to be a face mask on the play as they grab him. You can kind of see his helmet jerk. So this is going to be a first down. I think Don Parker credited with the tackle. Yeah, yep. when you can see it from here, you know, that's going to be a pretty easy one for the officials to call. So Tennessee State having a lot of success here, and then the racers help them out a little bit with a big penalty. Yeah, obviously TSU couldn't have thought of a better start so far. Three productive plays, tack on a face mask penalty, gets them all the way down to 24. Racers have had success. Again, stopping drives, bending but not breaking. Let's see what they can do here on this opening drive by TSU. Green barks the signals. Twins to the left side, working from the left hash mark. Hand off to Starling, up the gut, kicks it down to the 20. Picks up about four, maybe five yards on the play. Alec Long with the tackle. You could uh, hear in our scouting report, they talked about how good this running back was. He's a good one. He is a good one, Neil, and a, and a young good one. Comes in for the, on the season, 49 carries for 231 yards and a touchdown, averaging 4.7 yards a carry and showed great patience there on that carry. The racer coaching staff believes he'll be a star in the league for years to come. Tennessee State already in the racer red zone. They'll go twins to the right, single wide out to the left. Green coming off. His team's first win, looking to go back-to-back. -back. Ball inside the 20. Hand off again. Starling stays on his feet. He's able to get forward for maybe a yard or two. And that's it. On the tackle for the racers is Ethan Edmondson. That'll bring up third down and two. 12 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Yeah, Edmondson did a nice job there again, scraping down the line of scrimmage, throwing his body, able to come up, but it does bring up the first third down of the afternoon. Third and four for the Tigers. Starling in at running back. Single wide out to the left side. That is Perry. That is Johnson actually to the left side. The single wide out to the right. Weish. He'll bring Perry in motion for the Jets sweep. Hand it off. He cuts up the middle. Makes another cut. Still on his feet inside the 10. He picked oh, up the first down. About a seven-yard gain on the play as Tay Carruthers finally brought him down. Yeah, he had the first down before the first contact as he cut back across the grain. But you see here on the replay as he cuts back, Racers forcing to grab a hold of him as he tries that second effort. But the Racers did bring him down. Not before he gets inside the 10. Be first and goal from the Racer 9. Weish sets wide to the right side. And this time we'll see Johnson go into the slot. He'll have two in the slot. Trips right. Green brings a man in motion to the right. Now he goes back to the left. He'll set up as a wing. Handoff goes to Starling up the middle. The racers hop on his back. Stays on his feet inside the five. Down to the four. Great second effort by Starling to pick up two or three extra yards. A racer loses his helmet, so Long has to come off the field. Take a runners with the tackle. You mentioned it, Neil, that the racer coaching staff was very, uh, very high on this uh, running back from TSU, and he's proving it today. Like you said, stopped in the line of scrimmage, but kept driving his feet and got the ball all the way down to the four. That young man is doing a nice job carrying it. Again, a transfer, I believe, Neil, um, coming from Memphis. Single wide out each side. And we see some movement by Tennessee State. Several racers point, and I believe the officials had the flags on the way before that happened. That will cost Tennessee State five yards. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Yeah, really the first negative thing to happen to this Tiger offense, Neil. They've been on really on a roll here so far, picking up yards, taking advantage of racer penalties. But that one's going to back them up, bringing up a second goal from the nine. 
So it makes it a little more complicated for the Tigers. They'll set trips to the right, working from the left hash mark, and then the officials blow the whistle and want to confer. The referee comes over, calls another one over. Well, I'm not really sure what that was about. They're going to start the clock here, though. That'll get us under the 11-minute mark. Tennessee State trying to shove it into the end zone on their initial drive. They'll have it second down and goal from the nine. Snap back, stretch left side, and bumped out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. I say stepped out of bounds, actually, I think, at the eight-yard line. That's Starling as Samuda pushed him out of bounds. Yeah, Samuda coming off a big week last week, being co-defensive player of the week in the OBC. Uh, but nice job of forcing that out of bounds. That'll bring up third down and seven. Make some noise for your racer defense. So now the racers face a third down for Tennessee State, looking to come up with something big, and the Tigers hoping to convert here with Zeta, their field goal kicker. Again, they're in range, pretty much 35 on in, so they'd like to get six, but if not, Feel pretty good about putting three on the board. Now Tennessee State's going to take a timeout. So while they talk about it, we will as well. We'll get a media timeout. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network on ESPN+. Excellence is being unapologetically who you are. The cellar door, conveniently located north of Stewart Stadium on 641 North. Ample parking, easy in and out, the convenient drive up window. Now offering delivery service. The cellar door on 641 North. All right, Neil, welcome back. Eighth play drive so far, 68 yards. And TSU finds themselves on the Racer 7, third and goal. Working from the top hash, he'll go trips to the right. Green, ready to go. Out of your typical shotgun. Two-step drop, throws into the end zone, right corner. It's over his receiver's head. Then here comes a late flag, and the Racer's... Maybe guilty of ability. Silva and Turner had the coverage there, but it looked like they're going to get a flag on the play. Yeah, that came from the side judge. He's back by the back pylon of the end zone. And was looking here on the replay. Again, looks like a good good coverage so far. Again, I guess they're going to say was not uh, attempting to make a play on the ball, but uh, he pulled it pretty quick. Let's see what the official said. See, that's what I thought. It was looked like three yards over the guy's head out of bounds. So yeah, good job know. officiating. Yeah. I like you like yeah. to see you know, again. He saw that. He didn't see where the ball landed, but it got together. But uh, Neil, I, th I think as we come out for this field goal attempt, I think the uh, Zeta's got plenty of range for this. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, last week kicked a uh, OBC record tying 62 <laughs> yarder. Uh, this one definitely won't have that range. It looks like it's going to be around a uh, what 24 yarder, Neil. Looks that way. So you'd figure for him a chip shot. He's 8 of 10 on field goals this season. Says he's ready. Left the program for a season. He's back. Oh, a bit of a bad snap. The racers get in. And they're going to down the man at the 18-yard line. So because the snap was bad, the racers dodge a bullet. And that was Alec Long jumping on top of him for the tackle. Neil, yeah, we talked about before the game started, it seems like the racers not only are they having their winning ways and playing good football, but luck has sometimes been on their side. You look at an opening drive by TSU, who pretty much did what they wanted to do. And then we see a goal, a goal line stand by the racers looking at a field goal attempt, botch snap, again, turnover on downs and the racers take possession again the racers still come out smelling like a rose nine plays 68 yards normally those are going to at least end up with some points on the board but the racers old. let's see what they can do offensively now preston rice in at quarterback on the season 34 of 67 two interceptions 51 percent completion rate he's thrown three touchdown passes handoff goes to witherspoon stretches to the outside and Moves the pile a little bit, maybe a yard at the most. Nate Sutton in on the tackle for Tennessee State. Yeah, Witherspoon with his first carry of, of the game. But, again, he's had a great talk about another freshman who's had a great uh, start to his young career. 51 carries on the season for 236 yards and an average of 4.6 yards per carry. And got two touchdowns last week against Tech, his first two as a racer. Brooks, who had the big week last week, 100-yard game, sets wide to the right. Races to go twins left. That's Bell and Dallas. I'll bring a man in motion to the left side. He'll set up as a wing. Handoff goes to Witherspoon. He bumps to the outside, tries to turn the corner, can't. Stumbles down to near the 20-yard line, a gain of maybe two. Terry Strotter 
with the tackle for Tennessee State. Yeah, back to back rounds going to pick up uh, just about a little under two yards. Actually, going to be about a yard, third and nine. Again, the Racers have hung their hat on being able to run the football so far. TSU doing a nice job of filling gaps, and you see there their, their defensive starters. Uh, Hawkins, uh, their number 55, their defensive lineman, an outstanding player, one of their, their second leading tackler on the team. But now the Racers set up with a third down situation. Let's see what they do. Trips left on a passing down. Rice in the pocket, looks right side, fires. It is incomplete, intended for Brooks. But the Racers are going to go three and out. Good coverage there for Nick Harper, Jr., the all-OVC defensive back for Tennessee State. And the Racers will bring out the punting unit. De'Ron Johnson, four returns, 13.5. 20 long, and Lewis Halton, 10 punts, a 36.6 yard average. He'll stand at about his five yard line, so the Tigers should get really good field position here. Not much wind to affect play today, unlike last week when the first and third quarters were positive for the Racers and then negative from the wind standpoint. Here's the boot. Good tight spiral, not a lot of hang time. Backpedaling Tennessee State will catch it in the neighborhood of the 29-yard line. That will get us to our next media timeout with 8.24 to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network on ES. And welcome back to Roy Stewart Stadium and OBC action. Currently with 8.24 left here in the first quarter, TSU 0, Murray 0. Uh, TSU getting ready to begin their second drive after their first one. A 10-play, 57-yard drive ended in a botch snap, no points. First and 10, Tigers. Starling, six carries, 32 yards in that first series. In it, running back pass left side. It's caught. Racers went for the pick. It's saved out to cross the 40, near the 45-yard line on the reception. Cam Weish, and that was Darnell Victor with the tackle. Yeah, and Turner just inches away from an interception. Again, the Racers leading the FCS uh, in their interception returns, and that time just a few inches away from that. But like you said, Neil, missed it, and a big gain for TSU. That'll put it out to the 45-yard line, so for a second straight series, excellent field position for Tennessee State as we roll under the 8-minute mark. Twins right. Inside handoff goes to Starling, and a racer fell down. He stretches to the outside. He's across the 45-40, down to the 39-yard line. Another tremendous carry that time for Tennessee State. Cortez Roberts with the tackle. Yeah, here you see on the replay, just an inside zone. Humping missed the tackle there. And, uh, no, I'm sorry, that was Samuva, but again, missed the tackle. Big pickup by Starling, having a great afternoon so far. On the first drive, had six carries for 32 yards. Uh, and that one probably the biggest of the afternoon for the young man. First and 10, 7.22 to go. So far, a scoreless first quarter from the bottom hash mark as we view the field. Tennessee State going left to right. Fake handoff. Green fires across the middle. Has his man across the 25-20. Still on his feet. 15 down to about the 13-yard line. Zaire Thornton with the catch and another first down for Tennessee State before Sylvan Turner brought him down. Yeah, Neil, that same play they went to last time. Again, had man coverage here, and you just see Green taking back the slant, waits on it, able to get open. And again, it takes a host of racers to bring him down. But again, just a man coverage, backside slant. Gets TSU all the way back down. Again, TSU putting together two very effective offensive drives. And again, this one finds themselves first and 10 on the Racer 12. So the second consecutive trip into the red zone, you just can't expect, if you're a Racer fan, to continue giving them trips and come away with nothing. So for Tennessee staying another opportunity, they'll go with a full house look here with Max Protect out of shotgun. We get a delay a game called against Tennessee State. So this is also back-to-back -back times. Tennessee State has had a red zone penalty that's going to back them up. Yeah, Neil, again, they've been so good basically uh, throughout the field, but again, getting the ball down to the red zone. But like you said, the last one, uh, legal procedure, this one to delay a game, having a few difficulties with penalties here. Again, goes from a first and 10 to first and 15. But looking at Starling, six carries on the afternoon, 32 yards, a long of 11, based on what the stat board's telling us right now. But that young man is having a, a whale of an afternoon so far today. Starling stands to the left of Green, the quarterback. They'll go twin to the left side. That's Weiss right. Running back goes in motion. Green calls his number all the way. Going to be sorry that he did. He's dropped at the 22. It'll be a loss on the play. Scotty Humpet got back there and brought him down. Yeah, nice job of the racer defense. Again, fake the fake the screen pass, and you'll see Green pull it here. Going to fall out. His, his puller went the different direction, and all of a sudden Green finds him nothing but blue shirts. So uh, first and 15 becomes second and 17. 
or maybe second and 19 as we're going the wrong direction here for the Tigers. Tennessee State will try to get something going here on second down. 526 remaining in a scoreless first quarter. Green has the ball. Good protection for the moment. Fires across the middle. Has his man at the 10. Five brought down at the four-yard line. Another big catch by Zaire Green, Thornton. Sylvan Turner brought him down. Doesn't have a first down, but he's about a yard away. Yeah, Thornton continuing to have a good afternoon as well. Came into the game with six catches for 58 yards. But I know that's his third on the afternoon. And they're going to bring up a third and a very short, I believe. Third and one from the three. So Tennessee State will try to convert on third down as we go into the five-minute mark. Benjamin Johnson in at fullback, so he's in to block. And then we get another timeout. This is another timeout taken by Tennessee State. Timeout. It is now. Tennessee State. So Tennessee State burns their second timeout. This is another media timeout, so we'll take a tape break as well. Horse powered by CFSB. We're scoreless at Stewart Stadium on the Racer Sports Network. Manning the ball at the Murray State three-yard line. They'll go with an I set. Johnson and McCauley in. McCauley, the tailback. They'll give it to the fullback, Johnson. He powers it down to the two. They're just needing the yard for that first down. I don't believe he got enough to get there. On the tackle was Darnell Victor for the Racers. I think it's going to be close, Neil. Again, I had to get down to the two. They're going to mark it right at the two. I think they'll probably take time to measure as they're taking a look. You see here on the replay, just a basic fullback dive. They they meet him in the hole, but again, unable to bring him down. But they're going to bring in the chains and measure. So they'll, while they do that, we'll tell you Swift and Staley, a proud partner of Murray State Athletics in racer football. And we thank them for their continued support. Swift and Staley says, go racers. They are the sponsor for today's game. Also, Hopbound Brew Pub, excited to be Murray's first microbrewery, locally owned and operated. Hopbound located at 317 Chestnut Street. Well, craft beer brewed in-house is their specialty. The full-service bar stock with your favorite domestic beer, distilled spirits and wine. Text Racers to 31996 to receive discounts and special offers each month. My wife and I there last night. The cheese with the pretzels are absolutely amazing. We uh, took care of those pretty quickly, so I highly suggest those there at hop out well the racers watch the sticks go to the other side and that flips to first down so they did get the nose of the ball where it needed to be first and goal tennessee state and here we go neil four downs right here again the racer defense has been strong but again that time uh tsu behind their fullback and we've got a power set here let's see what the tigers decide to do mccauley and johnson is in They'll direct snap it to McCauley. He'll take it into the end zone without issue. And it is a two-yard touchdown run. The Tigers take the lead with 4.02 to go, 6 to nothing. Yeah, that was just power on football. Big on big, opening holes, and that time McCauley able to go through and basically untouched, Neil. And again, the Racers, I mean, the Tigers put together two impressive offensive drives so far this afternoon. But you see here on the replay, block down, pull a guard, lead up in the hole, and again, McCauley just into the end zone. Uh, untouched, which brings on the extra point. TSU taking the lead again with 4.02 left here in the third quarter, 6-0. Extra point still to come. Second touchdown of the season for the junior out of Chattanooga. Zeta on for the point after. It looks ugly, but it is good. 7 nothing. your score. 4.02 to left in the first quarter as uh, the Racers will try to bounce back. And so far, they're going to have to come up with something that's going to keep the defense off the field for a while, Josh, and uh, Tennessee State did a great job against them in the first half. You do, as you look here at the replays, Neil, again, the pass has been effective, the run game also effective for the Tigers, and able to capitalize on this drive where they missed out on the last time. But uh, again, TSU, pretty, fairly dominant performance so far this afternoon offensively. Something the Racers haven't been able to do, they've been very resilient so far this season when faced with any kind of adversity, they've been able to bounce back. Meanwhile, Tennessee State Despite starting 0-2 against good competition, able to come back and get a narrow win against Eastern Illinois this past week. 
and they certainly don't look like a team that started the season 0-2. You know, they don't, Neil. And again, you talk about being 0-2. Again, the first week of the season lost uh, 27-20 to to Austin P. We know they're a good football team. Their other loss came to Jacksonville State 38-16. So Rod Reed's got him a good football team, and so far offensively, they performed well and, again, held the Racers to their only possession being a three and out. So Racers have their work cut out, 402 left first quarter. Uh, but, again, we'll see the Racers. They've always been resilient all year. Again, a lot of football to play. But let's see how they respond to this early expedition by here by the Tigers. Caleb Mosley with 15 kickoffs this season, a 56.5-yard average. And Malik Honeycutt, his return, too, for a 20-yard average. His long has been 24. Here's the boot. It's going to be an end over end taken by Honeycutt at the two. At the far hash mark, brings it across the 15-20. Makes a cut between two defenders, then a stack ball on him. Gets out to about the 28-yard line before Kenyon Garlington, first man there for Tennessee State. And the Racers will set up camp there with 3.53 to go, trailing 7 to nothing. Yeah, they on the first time that Preston Rice and his offensive unit was on the field. Uh, two runs off right tackle, unsuccessful and unable to complete on third. So, again, the first drive, not what the Racers expected, but, again, had a has had a good season so far, being balanced, running the football, throwing it. And, again, we know that uh, TSU defense coming out with that even front. Uh, so, let's see here as we go first and ten on the Racer 28. Witherspoon in at running back. The Racers go twins to the right side. Brooks is in the slot. And the snap back to Rice. Rolls to his right side, looks down the sideline, fires for Bell. It's tipped by a Tiger, incomplete. Right but a good defensive play once again. That was Nick Harper, Jr., getting a hand on it. You know, you called uh, Harper's name twice. You see her just a corner route. Rice rolling to his right, throws the corner, but a nice play by Harper coming over, breaking up. He has 17 tackles on the year, uh, one tackle for loss, and was just a one catch away from his first interception. Raises a go with twins to the right side this time. That's Satoff is in the slot. Brooks switches sides. He's to the left this time. Rice has it. Fires, hits Brooks immediately. He goes down to the 33-yard line, so it'll be a gain of about five yards on the play before Kenyon Andrews brought him down. Yeah, kind of having trouble getting a little rhythm here. Nice job of Rice to Brooks. Again, we know what they did last week at Tech, and so brings up a very manageable third and five, but trying to find a rhythm here for the racer offense. Bell will be wide to the left side. Brooks is wide to the right. No one really far wide here as everybody's fairly tight. Dallas is the wing to the right side. It'll be a toss to Dallas, turns the corner, has the first down as he goes down at the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight yards on the play. Getting on Andrews with another tackle for TSU. Yeah, just a quick toss here to Dallas. And again, nice job of getting north and south here as he had to pick up the first down. Picked up more than that all the way down to the 41. But a really nice job of knowing a play, setting it up the way you want to, and picking up a first down. The first one of the afternoon for Murray State. Under three minutes to go. Tigers on top, 7-0 against the 25th-ranked Racers. Ranked for the first time since 2011. Pistol set this time. Witherspoon sidesteps one defender and stumbles his way down to about the 43. He'll gain three on the play. Strotter with the tackle for the Tigers. Yeah, Witherspoon having a good year. Again, nice job there. His third carry on the afternoon picked up a gain of three there. Again, a gain of three on first down is, is heading in the right direction as the racers find themselves trying to find their offensive rhythm. Second down and seven. Twins right side. It's Bell and Dallas. Brooks is wide to the left side. Roll to the right is Rice. Gives a little pump fake. Fires downfield. He has Dallas at the 32. 25, 20, 15, 10. See you later. Touchdown, Dallas. And the racers are on the board. Nice job of Price. Rice there rolling to his right. And again, Dallas right there in the seam. He started out. We'll see it here on the replay. Rolling to his right. And TSU gets uh, has a coverage miss malfunction there. And Dallas finds himself running untouched down the numbers. Rice finds him touchdown racers. The reign of scores seven to six, just what the racers needed. A big play that they talk about all the time. Nice job. Second touchdown of the season for Dallas, who scored the first touchdown of the year for the racers on an 83-yard connection to Rice in game one. So the racers with a chance to tie. There's the plant, the kick. 
It is on the way, and Aaron Baum ties the game with a point after. 2-0-1 remaining in the, the first quarter. We are tied at 7. A pretty impressive drive that time, Josh. It was, and a nice job of play calling. You see here the big third down play to pick up the first down. You see Witherspoon here off of the left guard, again, picking up that gain of three. And here's going to be your touchdown play. Rice rolling to his right, and again, finds Dallas all by himself. And then it's just a foot race to the end zone to get our score, 7-7. Seven to seven. TSU versus Murray State here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. For great food, delicious appetizers and your favorite beverages, it's Murray's Big Apple Grill and Bar before the game, after the game, or to watch the game. The Big Apple Grill and Bar is the place to go, a Murray tradition for weekly live music, trivia, and more. Try the famous B-roll at the Big Apple Grill and Bar, your Monday night home for the Hey Coach Watch Show. And I think we're making plans to head out and play a little trivia Wednesday night. So we certainly hope to see you there, and it's good to cue the horse and watch the horse take a lap around the track. For a, an opposing defense, Josh, it's, okay, you know you didn't do your job, but then you have to watch that horse run behind you, and it has to feel twice as bad. It does, and again, as a former player and, and now someone who watches the opposing team turn, like, is that a real horse? And it most certainly is. So always, a, in my biased opinion, one of the greatest traditions in college athletics. De'Ron Johnson is the man they'd like to return it for Tennessee State. And he is back deep for the Tigers, along with Jalen Rouse. He's on the far hash mark. The racers get this one kicked off. This one, again, will be unreturnable, about eight yards deep in the end zone. It goes on out. So TSU will get it on the touchback, and let's see how the Tennessee State offense responds to the defense giving up seven. You know, again, I, I was proud to see the racers respond. Again, came out the first series, not, uh, not what they had designed. Again, TSU put together two effective drives. But, you know, the racer defensive coaching staff and, and players have been over there talking and feel confident Coach Dylan Sanders is, is making adjustments uh, as, again, TSU's been able to run the football effectively, been able to find uh, the receivers. Again, Zaire Thornton has had a big afternoon so far. So let's see what adjustments the racers make as TSU wants to continue uh, with what they've been able to do so far in their first two drives of the game. No updated stats to give you at the moment as we are having some issues with the stat package, and I'm sure they're working on that. Handoff goes up the middle and not much doing but a broken tackle, a second broken tackle, and finally the Racers are able to get Devon Starling, but he didn't make it easy for him. Marvin Pierre finally said, enough of this, you're going down. Well, watch this young man run the football. We've got one missed tackle. Again, running the football, here comes another, and a third, and like you said, finally Pierre able to bring him down. But again, that young man running the football hard, and like I said, we don't have updated stats right now, but I think that's at least his ninth carry so far probably for around 50 or 60 yards. Second down and eight. Green barks the signals from a pistol scent this time. Has the ball. Something didn't look right there as Tennessee State just throws. They'll throw sideline. It's caught at the 38-yard line and it's being ridden down from behind for the first down. That's Johnson. Don Parker with the tackle. That was an odd-looking play, Josh, as the offensive line just stood there. I think the offensive line thought they got somebody to jump, and that way, all of a sudden, Green, you see him here. He snaps it, and the racers, everybody kind of takes off. But Green does a nice job of doing his scramble drill, going to throw back across his body, something coaches don't like you to do. But in this case, a pickup of 10, first and, first and 10. Twins to the left side. Green with a handoff to Starling. A missed tackle for the Racers. He's able to get out of that. Gets forward instead of getting a loss on the play. He's going to pick up about three to the 38-yard line. Marvin Pierre with another tackle for MSU. Yeah, and you see Kate Schubert coming there through the, the line and having a chance to take him down in the backfield. But again, nice job there by Starling. He's, he's running behind his pads and picking up something out of nothing. Again, having a, again, I don't know his current stats, but uh, so far he's been the workhorse for the Tigers. 22 seconds in ticking here in the first quarter. If it's on the ground, this will likely be the final play. There's 10 seconds on the play clock, so they are going to have to snap it. Max protect set. Hand off, stretch to the left side, is going to get to the 40. It's going to be about a three-yard gain on the play. As Rouse with the carry, the tackle by Tay Carruthers, and that'll get us to the end of the first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven your score, horse powered by CFSB. This is Racer Football on ESPN+. First quarter, we have a tie score, Tennessee State 7, Murray State 7. Both teams have exchanged back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives, and now TSU finds them third and five on their own 40 as we start the second quarter. Tigers two of three on third down conversions. They go with a max protect shotgun set. 
Running back at each side of the quarterback, stays in the pocket, fires. It is caught for the first down at the 48-yard line. He goes down immediately, but it is a first down on another catch by Dayron Johnson. And Devontae McKee, he had the interception that more or less ended last week's game. He gets the tackle there. Yeah, that time just a basic curl right on the outside. A nice throw from Green to uh, to the receiver. And you'll see it here on the instant replay. Sets his feet. Again, waits for the route to open up. Throw, nice catch. First and 10, TSU. Six of seven on the day for Isaiah Green. Tennessee State will go from the top hash mark. They'll go twins to the left. Single wide out to the right side. Fake handoff. Pass goes to the wing, set off to the right. The racer's going to drop him in his tracks. On the catch, Benjamin Johnson, nowhere to go. Take Carruthers stopped him. Yeah, nice job there, Carruthers. Again, just uh, brought him across the formation. But Carruthers did a nice job coming up on an open field tackle and, and, and bringing him down in his tracks for a gain of zero on the play. 13-yard gain on the previous play on the pass to Dayron Johnson, then a zero there. So it'll bring up second down and 10. The first minute. In the books of quarter number two. Tied at seven. Green brings a man in motion. Hand off again up the middle to about the 45-yard line and then push backward. It will be about a two-yard gain on the play by Jalen Rouse. It'll bring up third down and eight. The tackle by Eric Samuda. Yeah, bring up a third down for the Tigers. So far in the afternoon, they're three of four on third down conversion. This time, they're going to find themselves with a Long third and seven. Isaiah Green in what looks like a passing situation. He's seven out of eight. He's been pretty good. He steps to the line as he gets some additional instructions from the coaching staff to the sideline. Tennessee State has one timeout if they need it. Left in the half. Twins right, single wide out to the left from the near hash mark. Two-step drop. Green flushed out of the pocket. He evades one man, gets down to the 40, not enough for the first down, but it will be about a five-yard gain. Marvin Pierre with another tackle. Yeah, going to be short of the first down, but again, Green did a nice job, felt pressure, stepped up in the pocket. The racers do bring him down short, uh, but again, a nice job of, of turning something into nothing as the racer secondary had nice coverage, no open receivers as TSU will send their punting unit. Well, we assume they're punting unit, Neil. We'll see what, uh, what unit they send out here. Tennessee State. 0 of 1 on fourth down, and that really wasn't one where they went for it. That was on a bad snap. It essentially was credited because it wasn't actually an attempted kick. So 12 18 to go. They'll bring out Caleb Mosley, the punter, all OBC last season, and we do have a flag. Delay the game. Delay a game for Tennessee State. And to be honest, in this situation, that's not a bad penalty. It's not. Again, it just gets a little bit more room for them to uh, try maybe the coffin corner kick or something. But again, not a bad, not a bad penalty here. 21 punts, a 39.8 yard average for Mosley. And Honeycutt back deep. He has five returns for six, capable of breaking one, as we all know. But as long this season has been 15. Mosley at the 40 takes a good snap, gets it away. Tremendous hang time. Going to land inside the five and be caught by a teammate because of that hang time. Caught at the five yard line, and the Rangers have a long way to go as we get to a media timeout. 11.58 remaining in the second quarter, deadlocked at seven, horse powered by CFSB. This is ESPN Plus, and the real closers are always ready to close. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental of Tennessee. Talk to your employer or visit coveryourmouth.com today to learn more. And we're back as our racers take possession on their own five-yard line after a punt. And again, Preston Rice finds him, him as racers first and ten from their five. Racers held to 73 rushing yards or 73 total yards on the day. Up the middle, this is Witherspoon. He scrambles out to about the nine-yard line, about a three to four-yard gain on the play before Teray Jones makes the tackle. Looks like a three-yard pickup for the racers. So the rushing yard's tough to come by. That puts it at 15 for Murray State. Really doing a great job on the ground through the first two games, but Tennessee Tech did a tremendous job last week. Yeah, I think we've lost a shoe here, Neil. Um, and this is the player, not the horse? No, it's Witherspoon. Okay. Witherspoon lost his shoe. TSU threw it to their sideline. Their coaches <laughs> threw it back, and now Witherspoon has it back on. All right. So we're good to go. Second and seven. So a racer threw a shoe, but he's back at it with second down at seven. Single wide out to the right and to the left. 
Two-step drop. Rice lots of time down the sideline. And nothing. I thought I saw a handful of jersey there. I don't. I think this may be a hold and not pass interference. Fondren Hollis with the coverage. But it is pass interference. But you can see with the glasses, I don't know if they'll show it on the replay, but a big handful of jersey here on the side. Yeah, again, we see the double move there by the racer receiver. And if you look at that back left hand, there's definitely a, well, it looked like more of a, more of a pull than from up here. But, again, the, the official wasting no time throwing it. Pass interference, fresh set of downs. Move the ball all the way out to the 23 as the racers take that's advantage and get out of that, get away from that end zone. At their own 23 yard line. And that's another racer, first down. Single wide out to the right and left for the racers. Let's see how they handle the first down via penalty. And off goes to Witherspoon. Big hole right side. Makes a man miss across the 30, 35, 40, 45. Run out of bounds. Just before he got to midfield, but the biggest rushing run of the day. And hang on, Josh Green, the tackle, but a flag on the play at the 27. Likely he's bringing this one back. I would think so, Neil. It was thrown by the back judge. Um, Holding offense, number 21, 10-yard penalty, still first down. So the racers enjoy some prosperity with the first down via the penalty and then have a first down wiped out with a penalty of their own. Yeah, and you see it right there, Neil. Uh, again, the hold right there by number 21 by the racers. Uh, Brooks that time had him, the, did not let him go, uh, and the back judge throws it, which, again, negates that nice run by Witherspoon. But Reigns first down now, first and a very uncommon 13. 158 total yards for the racers to 76 for, or rather for Tennessee State, 76 rather for the racers on the day. Rice in the pocket, fires sideline and too far out in front of Brooks. Had it been on the money, he would have had a few yards. It had been close to getting a first down. Kenyon Andrews with the coverage and it'll bring up second down and 13 for the racers. Yeah, Rice and uh, his receivers just really unable to find a rhythm that time. That's the five, five or ten yard out, seven yard out there by uh, Brooks and just uh, kind of overthrew him towards the sideline. So the incomplete pass for Rice. He's now two of six on the day for 61 yards on third and long. Brooks will be wide to the right side. The race was to go trips to the left. Honey cut in the slot. Hand off Witherspoon, big hole across the 25, 30, stiff arms a man, goes through two more. He's out to the 37. No flags on this one. That'll be enough for a racer first down. Michael Crawford brought him down. Yeah, really nice here. You see Witherspoon reading his blocks, opens up. Levi Nestler there at the center with the block, breaks the tackle, and again takes two guys to bring him down. Nice job there by Witherspoon. Best carry of the afternoon, the other negated by a holding penalty. That's a 13-yard gain, and for Witherspoon, that puts him at 20 yards on five carries as we approach the 10-minute mark of the second quarter. Tied at seven. A wing on each side of this pistol set. Hand off to Witherspoon. Looks left side. Not much happening there. Stacked up with a bunch of white shirts before the play no is blown dead. And it'll be a short loss on the play. First man there was James Green for Tennessee State. Yeah, that time Witherspoon looking for a hole. Wasn't one there. He's going to get a breather here as Castile comes into the game. But again, tried to go off left tackle. Nice job by the linebacker filling that gap. That was uh, number eight, James Green. It does bring up a second and 11. But for one thing, the racers are doing, they're keeping the defense off the field for a while. The time of possession uh, was really rolling against the racers last week. We'll get you an update on that later. Twins left, Rice in the pocket. They're going to take him down, though. They got back, got penetration. It's going to be a three-yard loss. The Racers did a great job allowing no sacks last week, but Davion Hawkins able to get back there for the sack. Yeah, like you said, you know, didn't give up any. Hawkins still on the ground here. We see our replay here. Hawkins able to get back and grab a hold of, of Rice there and bring him down. Uh, but we see Hawkins still sitting on the turf. That's his third sack of the season. That'll get us to immediate timeout. 9.01 to go. Second quarter tied at seven. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network on ESPN+. Plus. With 9.01 left in the first quarter as the Racers find themselves on a third and 14. One of two on today, and we have a play whistled dead before it gets underway by 
the referee. On my signal. So a clock issue. They'll get that worked out. Racers hoping to convert on third down here in Tennessee State trying to prevent that. Twins left, twins right. Castile in it running back. Rice fires, has Bell across midfield, taken down at the 46-yard line. First down, Racers. James Green with the tackle, but not before Bell had the first down. And the gun strap of the offensive line gave him Rice a chance to step up. He does and finds Bell, who has his ankle clipped out from underneath him, but not, not before he could pick up enough for the first down. Again, the Racer offensive line just giving up the sack before that, but nice job of giving Rice enough time to make a play to get a Bell past midfield and for a Racer first down. On the TSU 46. Three for seven, 79 yards timeout. passing for Bell. And we have a timeout for an injury timeout. We'll get us to another media timeout. 7-7 seven, seven your score, horse powered by CFSB. It's the Racer Sports Network on ESP. Conveniently located in the heart of the Midwest with all the charm you could ever hope for. Yes, Hoosier hospitality is alive and well. Come visit Evansville and you will see E is for everyone. We are back to action after the media timeout for the injured TSU player, Hollis. He's off the field. Racers bring a man in motion. Jet sweep. Man, TSU read that one perfectly. Just as Castile got the ball, Nate Sutton was there to plan him. It'll officially be about a four-yard loss on the play. Yeah, you know, Neil, sometimes uh, you sit up here and you know that that wasn't the way it was done. They didn't block Sutton. Uh, I think they tried to pull a guard and pick him up, but... Uh, Sutton beat the guard there and again came up with a big tackle for a loss. Going to be a loss of four for the racers getting back to midfield. Uh, but again, going the wrong direction for the racers. 113 total yards for the racers to 158 for Tennessee State. As we go under eight minutes to go, 7-7 seven, seven your score. Racers twins on either side. Rice throws the deep ball downfield and it is incomplete. Kind of thrown over the wrong shoulder of Bell. Once he turned to the sideline, he couldn't catch it. And David Dorsey had the coverage that time on Bell. Yeah, Bell had to step on Dorsey. And then, like you said, Neil, opened up to the field shoulder. Uh, was actually thrown over the outside. And, and Bell unable to adjust. Uh, but, again, a try vertical one of those big plays uh, that uh, Coach Hodges talks about taking advantage of. But the Racers find themselves third and 14 uh, with uh, so far on the afternoon. Only uh, two of three on third down conversion. Rice, three of eight, 79 yards. Needs to come up with something here on what looks like a sure passing situation. The racers put trips to the left side. Rice in the pocket. Fires right side. It is picked off by Tennessee State at the 12-yard line. The man goes down right there. A little bit of pushing there, but it is a pick by Josh Green on third and long. It's sort of like a punt, so uh, even though you don't want to give it up, uh, it is Tennessee State's ball. Yeah, that time Rice trying to throw down and uh, tried to find Brooks on the right side. Throws it in double coverage, and just the safety comes right over the top with the interception. Brooks does a nice job of going from receiver to defender to bring him down, but um, unfortunately that interception, like you said, Neil, not the worst thing that could happen because it does take the place of a punt. Uh, but you never like to see turnovers. But TSU will take possession uh, of the football with 744 left here in the second quarter. First and 10 from their own 10. Second interception of the season for James Green. That's the third pick thrown by Preston Rice on the year. And for Tennessee State, right back at it. Isaiah Green, 7 of 8, 99 yards. And Devon Starling with nine carries, 52 yards. Haven't heard from him in a while, but up the middle, out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. It's going to be about a 14-yard gain on the play. And that was Starling with the run. Don Parker with the tackle. Yeah, that time on that carry, Starling finds himself a wide open hole. A racer defender made it back in the backfield just in time to see Starling run past him. But again, a big gain there. Look, picking up around 12 or 20. Yeah, let's see, that was about a 17-yard gain. Phillip Brown set up as a wing left side. Starling gets the handoff right side. Breaks the tackle, but someone had him from the shirt, but he's still able to get something out of nothing down to about the 31-yard line. He gets four. Alec Long credited with the tackle. This kid's going to be something to behold for Tennessee State fans for years to come. Yeah, he's a special player. And again, the coach has mentioned it earlier, but again, already 11 carries for 73 yards this afternoon. He's out of the game now. Tennessee State has Josh Truhart in as a running back, generally a tight end. Green has it. He's going to hand it 
true. That's out of the backfield. That isn't true, Hart. Excuse me. That was McCauley. McCauley able to get across the 30 to 32. That's Austin Dalton with the tackle. Yeah, but it will bring up a third down. TSU three of five on the afternoon. Dalton had been dealing with an injury, was on crutches during one of the games, but he's back out there now. And with 6.08 to go, Tennessee State facing third and five with the ball on their own 32-yard line, trying to convert on third down for the fourth time today. Yeah, this is the time where Green has found Thornton uh, three times this afternoon on third down, so we'll see if he goes back to him on this one. A little bit of a low snap. Green's able to dig it out, decides to run, dives forward, didn't get what he needed. Someone's helmet came off for the racers, and it's out to the 35-yard line, two yards short. Marvin Pierre with the tackle. Yeah, nice job there. The racer defense coming up. Again, gave it the big run on, uh, on first down, but able to settle back down and going to force TSU to punt the ball away. You mentioned the discrepancy in, in yardage so far. TSU 180 yards of offense this afternoon with the racers at 130, 113. 11 first downs for TSU with the racers having seven. Time of possession also heavily in favor of Tennessee State as we have that updated now, 1436 to 740. 524 remaining. And back deep for Tennessee, or Tennessee State has Caleb Mosley in the punt. Back deep, Leek Honeycutt stands at his 20. There's the punt. Fantastic. Great hang time. Honeycutt goes to his knees and catches it at the 24, and the Racers will have it with 5.06 remaining and all three of their timeouts left. And we get immediate timeout. 7-7 seven, seven your score. Second quarter action from Stewart Stadium, horse powered by CFS Speed. It's the Racers Sports Network on ESPN+. Plus. To set an example here. Black excellence is being unapologetically who you are. Out of the media timeout, 5.06 left, second quarter action. TSU scored first, the racers answered. And nothing doing here in the second quarter. Let's see if the racers can do something here. It's the jet sweep with Bell, turns the corner on the short side of the field. He's bumped out of bounds at the 31. That's a six-yard gain on first down. Andrews chased him out. Yeah, nice job there, Bell, again, trying to turn the corner, picked up a gain of seven. Nice blocking on the outside by Brooks. Racers trying to take advantage. Again, the jet sweep, nice job there of uh, Weatherspoon picking up a block in the backfield. Again, nice gain of seven for the racers on first down. Second down and four. Racers have put trips to the right side. Bell, Dallas, Brooks, pistol sent this time. Pass to Dallas, poorly thrown. Dallas chased it. Then a late hit by Tennessee State withdraws two flags. And that's going to be a break for the racers. And I, I'm not sure the TSU player really meant to do it. He probably wasn't sure the play was over, but lowered the shoulder into it. So he's pleading his case, but it's not going to matter. Well, you can see here, Neil, again, that's an incomplete pass. Whistle's blown, and, and there's just no need for it. Yeah, once, I mean. once you hear the whistle, then you shouldn't do it, and, and we heard the whistle. Yeah. So that will cost Tennessee State instead of being a third down play. But the officials are going to confer about this one to be sure. I don't have to think, Neil, is there thinking, did somebody blow the whistle? Did we, did we, did, I saw the uh, the official waving it incomplete, and I would have to assume that the whistle was blown with it. But uh, the referee's going to tell us exactly what they're talking about. Play was over. A sportsman-like conduct defense. Nope. His first, number six. So that is against Josh Green. That is his first. And, again, you pick up two, you're gone. So we'll have to be careful. He's a big part of this defense for Tennessee State. Yeah, came up with a big play just on the last drive. But, again, that one unnecessary. Obvious out in front of everybody. And, again, play was already over. So, Rachel's take the penalty. Five penalties on the day for Tennessee State. 45 yards on his uh, weekly teleconference on the league broadcast this week. Uh, Coach Rod Reed was really happy with the win, but even he talked about they have to be a little bit better on penalties they were picking up, and that was one instance right there that I guarantee he wish he had that one back. Yeah, some penalties are you know just part of effort. That one was not. Poor choice, going to cost his team. For the Racers with the first down, 427 to go. Again, they have three timeouts should they need to use them. They'll work from the far hash, short side of the field. It's Bell faking the jet sweep this time. Rice fires. 
He has his man, and it's a great job by Tennessee State as the ball arrived for Witherspoon. Josh Green put his hand in front of it and slapped it out of bounds. Rebounds with a tremendous play. Yeah, it really was a nice play. Witherspoon there for the back shoulder catch. It came out of the backfield, but again, a nice play by the TSU defender to put his hand in at the last second and bat it away. Second and 10. Rice on the day has hit three out of 10, 79 yards on the percentage on the, the year for Rice. He's at 51%, so having a tough day from the completions, at least at this point. Hand off to Witherspoon. Stretch play right side. They grab him. He heads back the other way, tries to get away from a big lineman and does. Turns the corner and spins his way to the 49-yard line. He made about four yards when there really wasn't anything there for Tennessee State. Yeah, again, you see here on the replay, again, that time had his shirt grabbed, able to come back against the grain. Nice job of picking up a block there uh, by 87. Again, able to pick up something out of nothing. Uh, and the racers find themselves in a, a third and seven uh, thanks to the effort of Witherspoon. Detoya Ada Wally, 6'4 freshman out of Antioch, Tennessee, making that tackle for the Tigers. A big one for them. 3.40 to go. The Razors needing to convert big on third down here. Two step drop by Rice in the pocket. Has time. Flushed out. Rolls left. Looks to run for it. He has the first down and a little more. They didn't bring him down. He tucks the ball. Falls down at the 31 yard line. He was going to be happy with just the first down, but they didn't take him down until James Green chased him down. Dan, you see Rice out of the pocket here to the left side. Nice job by Witherspoon just getting in the way. And they miss a tackle. And Rice says, I'm not going out of bounds. Nice job of picking up the extra yards, getting the ball all the way down. Uh, to the TSU 30. I'll put Rice into positive yardage there with that 21-yard gain. That gives him a total of 18 on the day as we approach the three-minute mark. From the top hash mark, short side of the field, Honeycutt goes in motion. They'll hand it to him. It's the double. Comes to Bell. I thought he may have been looking to pass. Splits two defenders. 25-20, 15-10. Spun down at the one. First and goal racers with the razzle-dazzle. Little razzle-dazzle, Neil, and a great play there by Bell. The corner did a really nice job and was actually sitting at home waiting for him. But Bell just made a great play uh, and was able to pick up a big, big run there. But we do have an injured Tiger on the field. They'll take a look at him while they do. We'll tell you about Murray State University, one of America's best college values, and we're proud to provide a high-quality, high-impact academic experience. Check us out at admissions.murraystate.edu and begin your journey with us at Murray State. We are family. We are racers. So a big game that time for the racers, and that looked like it was going to be a loser of a play because Bell looked him in. It's like he's not going to get between these two defenders, and somehow he did, Josh. He, he found a way, Neil, and I, like you, thought, oh, well, here we go, and that's not going to work. But, again, Bell found a way, like you said, to basically squeeze through two defenders. The corner for TSU did a really nice job of staying home and was in position to make the play. Uh, but Bell did a really nice job of making the play. And, like you said, all of a sudden, Bell, what could have been a, a loss on the play, huge gain, and gets the ball first and goal from the one. TSU players are continuing to work on him. That's Nate Sutton, their uh, talented defensive end, two and a half sacks, three tackles for loss coming into the game. And he's having to be helped off. Looked like it might be an arm or shoulder issue for him. Yeah, and it was pretty obvious from the beginning that he was hurt. Yeah, it looks like he's holding that left shoulder. Always good to see him be able to walk out under their own power. But, again, I think you're right, Neil. I think it's an arm or a shoulder. So the TSU training staff will tend to him on the sideline, but for Tennessee State, they have to figure out a way to stop the racers who have the ball first and goal at the one. And unlike the past few seasons when the racers have it first and goal at the one, they generally have been a running team. Yeah, we see Cortez Jones coming in, Neil, as the, as the fullback here, Witherspoon behind him. Cortez with the extra Z on his name. He's in with Witherspoon. Racers with an extra blocker in there. Jones with the extra Z is at the goal line. I don't think he got in. I don't think so, Neil. Again, I'm looking from here, it looked like he was he was close. But it looked like they stood him up right at the goal line. That would have been monumental for him. His first touch as a racer to end in the end zone, but he didn't quite make it. The Darius Patterson able to come up and stop him about a foot away. Let's see what the racers will dial up on second down. This time they'll go with one back. Rice under center. Witherspoon. Rice is going to try to push his way in. 
It appears that he did, and he did. It's a one-yard touchdown run for Preston Rice as he is able to sneak it in for his third rushing touchdown of the season, and the Racers take a 13-7 lead. Yeah, and we have a flag after the play, Neil. Not sure what it is, but you see Rice just, again, forcing his way in. Ball's extended. You can clearly see a touchdown as he broke the plane, and we'll see what this um, – yeah, we've got the referee pointing against the racers. Going to be after the play, tacked on to the kickoff. Got to watch those, the unsportsmanlike, especially in this situation when you have Zeta. You start to get him around the 35, 40-yard line, and suddenly TSU can get some points on the board with their assistance. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number five, his first. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed. Well, that's against time. Preston Rice, so he needs to be sure he doesn't get a second one or the Racers are down to their backup quarterback. Yeah, and again, uncertain what happened there, Neil, whether it be words said or exchanged or what the case may be, but the uh, referee's still checking with uh, TSU's coaching staff. They're on the kickoff. On the kickoff. By the way, if you're hearing a buzz, yeah, that is uh, the PA system. I'm not sure why it's buzzing. I don't know if they have it up too loud or what, but that's the buzz you're hearing. It's nothing to do with our broadcast. But you can, everyone can hear it here at Stewart Stadium. 2.05 remaining as the Racers will try to expand the lead to seven points. Baum on for the point after. There's the kick. Aaron Baum nails it. 2.05 to go. The Racers up 14-7. And we have another flag on the play. So we'll uh, take a, a little look at this. And while we do, we'll tell you about Swift and Staley, a proud partner of Murray State Athletics and Racer Football. And we thank them for their continued support. Swift and Staley says, go Racers. So the offside, that goes against Tennessee State, and that is going to be waved off. Coming up at halftime, we'll have our Murray Electric stat summary. And also, we'll be bringing you the scoring summary of this one and the Taylor Family Dental scoreboard. Next week, the Racers will be at home once again as they'll take on Eastern Illinois in a 2 o'clock game. Meanwhile, Tennessee State, they're back at home at the Hole at Hale Stadium when they welcome UT Martin to town. You know, Neil, as we look at some of these plays from the last drive, it was a 7-play, 75-yard touchdown drive that took 301, capped off by what you just saw there, the Preston Rice one-yard touchdown run. Racers were penalized for unsportsmanlike on that play, which will impact this position of this kickoff. But Neil, with 2.05 left here in the second quarter, right before halftime, the Racers did defer their option to the second half. So a very important series here on, for both teams. One, TSU needs to put some points on the boards because the Racers will start the second half with possession. But, uh, again, if the Racers can, again, control field position, prevent any points from TSU, they'll fi- go in the halftime break, finding, a, finding themselves in a good position. So Racer 1 gets a lap around the field as the horse completes the lap, which is a tradition after racer touchdowns. And for Tennessee State, they hope to have better field position. As Baum brings it out, has it teed up at the 20-yard line. And Tennessee State will have their men back deep. That's Rouse back there along with Johnson. Johnson, a 24-yard average. He's had one of 44 yards, so the Razors have to be careful with him. PSU hoping for one of those returns that will set them up to maybe even the score before halftime. This one will be taken by Johnson at the 20, 25-30. Missed tackle by Castile across the 35 out to the 36-yard line. Tennessee State will have pretty good field position. The Tigers have one timeout remaining, 2.04 to go in the first half. The tackle on that one made by Darnell Victor for the Racers. Yeah, and the Tigers, again, so far this afternoon, 183 yards, 99 in the air, 84 on the ground. Um, but here you see the kickoff return there. Nice job of reading his blocks. And, again, the Racers flying around. A couple missed tackles. Did a nice job of bringing him back to the ground. But, again, TSU, like you said, Isaiah Green, their number 17, their quarterback, 7 of 8 on the afternoon for 99 yards with a 191.5 passing rating. So let's see if he can what he can do for his Tigers on this drive right before half. Twins right side. Now send Johnson in motion far side. Jet sweep. Hand it to him. Turns the corner. Has some good yardage across the 45. Has the first down out of the 48. But there's a flag on the field right at the line of scrimmage here on the near side. Sylvain Turner with the tackle for the Razors. Yeah, you got to think some type of procedure penalty here, Neil, as they're, as they're looking to the sideline. Offense. 
The illegal formation against the Tigers. That'll cost them again. So another five-yard penalty. It'll be their sixth for 50 yards and wipes out a really terrific gain on first down for TSU. Yeah, you mentioned that, Neil. Again, looking what you're going to have to have. Again, you've got a great field goal kicker in Zeta. But, again, wanting to have positive yardage, and you hate to pick up 10 and have it negated because it didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. But that's exactly what happened. So the Tigers find them first and 15 with 156 before the halftime break. I mean, generally, you, you, have a, you, you, know, you keep them somewhere around the 40. You feel good about that. For Zeta, he's just licking his chops when you get it to the 40. So the racers... They have their work cut out for them here at the SU with the ball down to a minute 45 to go. Inside handoff, bump to the outside, turning the corner at the 35-40 and bumped out of bounds at the 42-yard line. That's Starling, who's having a big day. McKee chased him out. Yeah, you mentioned Starling. That's going to be his 12th carry. And with that being what appeared to be a gain of about 10, that would be 12 carries for 83 yards just here in the first half. Back of the carry. Starling having a big day for Tennessee State. Unless something happens to him, you would feel certain he's going to have a 100-yard day out of Antioch, Tennessee. Just a freshman. Second and short. Green wants to throw. Has time in the pocket. Goes deep. It is incomplete. Had Josh Trueheart kind of twisting around a little bit. He couldn't bring it down. Don Parker had the coverage. Yeah, Trueheart found himself on the seam route and actually got behind the racer defender. But fortunately for the racers, he had to extend up. Quick got one hand on it but wasn't able to bring it down. So the incomplete pass puts Isaiah Green at 7 for 9 for 99 yards on this third down play. Tennessee State, they're batting 500, 3 of 6 on their third down conversions. They'll set trips to the left side. They'll work from the short side of the field from the top hash mark. They'll have a wide out to the right side. Green's ready, claps his hands, wants the ball, throws sideline, caught for the first down. That's Thornton inside the 50, down to the 48-yard line. Zaire Thornton, another big catch, and Alec Long tackled him. Yeah, his fourth catch of the afternoon, Neil, but all of them have been big, whether it be a slant route that time, just a hitch route, but all they needed was a first down, and that was plenty for that. First and 10 on the 49 of the racers. Snap back to Green, wants to throw again. Has good protection. Throws at the last moment. Caught by Starling out of the backfield. He's able to get a yard or so. Gets to the 47 before Alec Long chases him out of bounds with a minute 10 left in the first half. Yeah, that time Humpick almost came up with a big sack, but Green was able to get the ball out um, out in time to Starling, which was able to pick up one and get out of bounds. Like you said, Neil, they've got one timeout left and a minute 10 left here before halftime. They'll go twins right side and left side. Green with his running back standing when he has left on second down and nine. Claps his hands, wants the ball. Protection goes to the short side of the field and fires it out of bounds. The intended receiver out there for Tennessee State, Don Parker, by the way, had the coverage. That was Cedric Watkins, but couldn't get it to him. Yeah, Marvin Pierre able to get out there and force Green to throw the football. But we bring up third down. TSU on the afternoon. Let's see, they're four of seven. Like you said, they got uh, Zeta, who is an outstanding kicker. But again, they find themselves on the racer 48. Well, let's see what they dial up here. One wide to the top, one wide left side. Man in motion, that's Johnson. He's going to set up as a slot to the right. Shotgun set, green. Flushed out of the pocket, tucks and runs, is going to get the first down and a little more out to the 38-yard line, and that's puts TSU in field goal range. Eric Samuda chasing him down, and a huge third down conversion for the Tigers. Yeah, that time Green looking downfield, and he again boards the pressure, steps up, and then before Samuda can bring him down, enough yardage for the first down. And now we have officials time out to discuss it. But again, what a big play there by Green. Again, force out of the pocket. They'll add seven seconds to the game clock, but it to 54 seconds. Again, Tennessee State has a timeout, so time not a major factor for them in this scoring drive for the moment. They'll go twins right, single wide out to the left. Green 9 of 12 throwing the ball. He'll try to get them at least a little bit closer, and then we have a timeout 
taken by the racers and uh, one of the racer coaches unhappy with something that he saw out there and decided to blow the uh, time out there so the racers will have two left as they discuss this one. We know, Neil, again, anytime you see a coach like that, they obviously weren't lined up correctly. But you go back to that last, some of the plays on this drive, again, a big block there, which, again, we talked about Starling. Starling's had a big afternoon. And here you're going to come back and see Green coming back to that third down conversion, which was Green to Thornton. And here's the pickup. It's the last play that was here where Green gets out of the pocket. Somebody's going to bring him down. But that's where we find ourselves, first and 10. And, again, the defensive coach from Murray State obviously didn't like what he's seen, didn't line up correctly. And, Neil, in this type of situation, you've got to make sure you've got your players in the right spot because you don't want to give up this big play right before the halftime break. Tennessee State in a spot where they have a decent chance to get at least three, but they have zero thinking toward that end right now. They want six. They want to head to the dressing room with some momentum, especially with the racers getting the ball. And we have early motion here for Tennessee State. I would assume they're going to get an illegal procedure against the Tigers. And that will be their seventh penalty if that's the case. Everybody's pointing at everybody else, Neil. So we'll see what the officials see. Um, Nope, that's offside against the racers. What, what did he call that? Uh, basically, the, the uh, defense was making noises and things that simulated the snap count, okay. I assume. So, right. again, that would be on, on the defense. And so, because of that, going to be a penalty against the racers, bring up a first and five. That is the fourth penalty for Murray State for 45 yards, and that helps the TSU cause tremendously. Stab back, Green, house money. He's going to go for the long ball, and it is incomplete. Weich was the intended receiver. Good coverage by the racers, Sylvan Turner. But uh, first and five, that's a good spot to make that throw. Yeah, you go ahead and take a shot to the end zone. Turner step by step with, uh, with the receiver. But, again, nice shot. Like you said, Neil, no reason not to take that shot. Again, you're well within Zeta's range. Again, you have a good field, open field. That time, good, well played by the racer defense. Second and five. And at the ball at the 33-yard line, out of shotgun. Green barks his signals, claps his hands, has the ball in the pocket. Good protection, breaking down, gets out of trouble, turns to the right side, has some daylight, decides to run and get the first down, gets inside the 25, steps out of bounds at the 24. Smart play. Quinaz Turner credited with the tackle. You can tell this kid can play at another level. Of the Marshall quarterback transfer uh, does some really smart things. He does, and be able to control it, Neil, and not panic. Again, we talked about how TSU's offensive line had allowed 10 sacks coming into the game, but, you know, Green's had a 9 of 13 afternoon, but, again, what's impressed me the most about this young man is his ability to, to address, stay, stay calm and collected, and, and not put his team in bad positions. From the top hash mark, TSU will go twins right, single wide out to the left. Green, racers blitz him. He picks it up, makes two men miss. Can he make a third miss? Yes, but not a fourth. And the racers finally get the sack. That's going to put TSU back at about the 33-yard line. So a huge loss on the play. It's also going to force TSU to probably burn their final timeout. Isaiah Reed with the tackle. Yeah, it was a nice nice call there by Sanders, who defense coordinator for the racers, brought the cornerback blitz. Green didn't see him, uh, but we missed the tackle. Uh, again, nice job of Turner coming back and, and getting in on the tackle. But uh, Green did a nice job of, of avoiding the sack as long as he could. But like you said, got to burn the timeout. And again, nice call by the racer defensive coaching staff. Two and a half sacks on the season now for Isaiah Reed. And uh, that makes it a little more of a challenge if TSU does have to settle for the field goal. And now time is a big factor with 17 seconds to go and no timeouts remaining. This is big. It really is. It really kind of determines your play call. I mean, honestly, you really can't work anything in the middle of the field. You've got to work your sides. You've got to take a shot at the end zone because you don't have a way to stop the clock besides the kill the clock play. So really kind of limits your play selection. Again, they throw, I, mean, I know they feel comfortable with Zeta's range, but, again, it kind of limits what kind of play call you can make here. Not only do you have a second 19, but, again, the clock is your enemy. From the top hash mark, Tennessee State to go twins left, single wide out to the right. Green ready for it. Needs to come up with something big here in the pocket. Looks, throws the screen at the feet of his intended receiver, and it falls incomplete. That was Seabree Curtis out of the backfield. And for Tennessee State, 
third down, 12 seconds to go. They may could take one more shot at it, but I think they're going to go out and bring Zeta and take their points here. Yeah, no, again, I think you're right. Again, well within Zeta's range, but I think if they did try to come up with something uh, and end up maybe with that pass was complete, I think they would have found themselves uh, rushing to stop the clock. But uh, Zeta does take the field. Again, plenty of leg for this attempt. Be a 50-yard field goal attempt. He kicked a 52 and a, or excuse me, a 55 and a 62 last week. So here's a chance to get one from 50. Let's see what they do from the far hash mark. There's been one bad snap today. This one isn't one of them, though. It's perfect. This one certainly has the distance. It's on the way, and it is good. 50 yards out for Zeta. And your score is 14 to 10. And I did see a late flag come out on the play. I, I think the points will count. And we do have a, also an injured Tennessee State player sitting down on the field. But we'll have the official tell us exactly the way the flag went. But a 50-yard field goal. All sportsmanlike conduct on the kicking team, number 86. His first 85 correction. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That was Philip Brown with the unsportsmanlike conduct, and so the racers will get a little bit of a bonus here. Yeah, you now again, that could come back and, and haunt the Tigers again. You're talking about field position, but here is... kickoff return. Love a big play. No, Coach Hood's been waiting for his special teams to come up with some big plays. And what a better opportunity than now. You would think the Racers are not going to be left with any time following the return with only seven seconds left. So they'll hope to get it all here. It's going to be taken at the 26-yard line by one of the upbacks. And going down at the 31-yard line with two seconds to go. So the Racers may be forced to snap the ball. Damari Chambers with the tackle for Tennessee State. And we may see the Racers just go ahead and take a knee and head to the dressing room. Yeah, I think you're right. Neil Rice and his team takes the field and his offensive unit. But I think you're right. I think it'll be a, a snap and, and take that knee and head into the locker room with a 10-7 lead. Or, I'm sorry, 14-10 lead. And once again, it's a game where the Racers, they're down on possession time. They're down on total yardage, but ahead on the scoreboard. And they found themselves in that all year long. Again, it's one of <laughs> yeah. those not pretty, but again, find themselves ahead. Rice takes a knee. Final seconds will tick away, and that'll bring the curtain down on the first quarter. Murray State on top, 14 to 10. We'll have our Murray Electric stat summary coming up at the half. Also, your Taylor Family Dental scoreboard. Some other scores in the OVC, and believe it or not, I've never said this before in Racer football season, NCAA basketball tournament scores. Pass along a few of those your way as well. We'll take a break. Be back with more from Stewart Stadium, horse powered by CFSV. This is ESPN Plus and the Racer Sports Network. ABC. UFC 260. Fight on ESPNplus.com slash PP.
zone and so we saw that as well so you know as you look forward I, I'm sure coach Hood and staff talked about continuing to play well defensively eliminating the big play keep people in front of you and offensively uh, as we look at the stats not a good half but again we find ourselves in the lead so coming out getting back to again talking about us starting in the half with a good drive let's get to Witherspoon rolling let's uh, let Rice throw some again getting Brooks back in the game like he was last week and just getting back and what the racers do run the football look for the big play Murray Calloway County Hospital is owned to Murray State University and is a leading health care provider serving West Kentucky, Northwest Tennessee, with over 65 physicians representing 28 medical specialties. And as a not-for-profit hospital, Murray Calloway County Hospital invests in you. They're leading the way with technology and medical advancements, including the building of a new regional cancer center anticipated to break ground this year. They invite you to join their call-out cancer campaign. Now, this year looks much different than most, but cancer doesn't wait, and the importance of staying close to home has never been more clear. Everyone has been touched by cancer, and Murray Calloway County Hospital needs your support to build this facility for our community. For more information on how you can help in the fight against cancer, go to murrayhospital.org or call 270. 707621291. Malik Honey got back deep for the racers, and Antonio Zita tees it up as we get set. Actually, he does not handle the kickoff. My bad on that one for Tennessee State. When they kick off, it's Caleb Mosley who handles the kickoffs. He has it teed up to 35. So off a tee, Mosley's their guy. And let's see what Honeycutt can do on the season. His long has been 20. And here is the kick. This one will be fielded by Honeycutt at the 7. Brings it across the 10. Cuts to the middle of the field. He'll be taken down about the 23-yard line. That's where the racers will take it. Kenyon Andrews, who's having a big day tackle-wise, as you heard with the Murray Electric stats summary, picks up another tackle. So now you sit there and you look at it again, starting the second half. I, I can only imagine that uh, Coach Hood and Coach Hodges were talking to the guys that got blocking up front again. You know, TSU's playing that uh, even front and doing a good job of keeping things in front of them. Got the great player, Hawkins. Uh, but, again, establishing the run. Witherspoon, again, a, an outstanding freshman running back. Eight carries today for 36 yards. Stands beside Rice in the backfield. So, let's see what the racers. The racers can put together a nice long drive, even up this time of possession, and maybe put, walk away with some points on the board on this opening drive. Rice just 3 of 10 passing the ball. Likes to pass here. Fires sideline. Has his man. Taken down at the 29-yard line. That's D.J. Ruff, his first catch as a racer. Kenyon Andrews with another tackle. Yeah, good. Nice throw, nice catch, a pickup of what's going to be about six yards. So a nice job bringing up a second and four, getting back in the rhythm. You see here it's just a simple rise, looks to his left, comes back to just a simple hitch route. Nice throw, nice catch, gain of six. Caught by a tight end. That's something the racers haven't used a lot, but recently they're doing that. That has to make Josh McKeel happy. Absolutely. <laughs> and off left side, off tackle, goes to Witherspoon, powers us away to about the 31, about a two-yard gain on the play. That is TSU's Raymond Horton with the tackle. Yeah, Horton there, a 6'3", 325-pound junior from Daytona Beach, Florida. But, again, the racers find themselves in a third and two. First half, three of five on, on third down. This one a very manageable one. And we'll see what the, what they dial up here as, again, we just started the second half, 14-10 to 10, Murray State. TSU holding Murray State to a three and out on their initial drive of the game. Let's see if they can do it back-to-back -back halves. As the clock ticks here early in the third quarter. Rice has it, rolls to his rice pumps, or rolls to his right pumps. Another terrific play as it looked as if it was going to be hauled in by Brooks, but there's Nick Harper Jr. with another big play to swat it away. Man, you've called Harper's name lost. Again, Bryce rolling to his right, trying to connect with Brooks, and you just see Harper reach in at the last second and bat away. A nice defensive play, but really they've done a nice job of limiting what Brooks has been able to do this afternoon. The punt returns. Haven't had one return today. Johnson is back at the 20-yard line. Daron Johnson will try to return one. Uh, let's see if he's successful. 
for the Racers punting. Only one punt today of Lewis Halton, and it was a good one, 52 yards. He booms this one. My goodness. Great hang time, backpedaling at the 12-yard line. Johnson cuts to the outside. Brooks chasing him. He turns the corner at the 25, gets out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. It'll be a decent return before Alec Long chases him out. You know, Neil, again, you look at uh, special team play, and again, we talked about Kenyon Andrews making a play for TSU on their special teams. There you go, the leading tackler for the racers, Alec Long. But again, a nice return. Again, a nice, like you said, booming punt. Uh, but it almost outkicked the coverage of the racers, but long tracks him down and forces him back out of bounds around uh, the 31 yard line. But TSU able to hold Murray State on their opening drive to a three and out. We'll see what the racer defense can do as we get uh, Isaiah Green, 9 of 14 for 108 yards in the first half. See what he can do here on his first possession of the second half. Von Starling in a running back, 84 yards. It's going to be a sweep to the side, and it's not oh, going to work team out. Team it's going to be a loss on the play as DSU brought Cedric Watkins from the end, and that didn't work out. Cortez Roberts sniffed it out, dropped him for a four-yard loss. Yeah, really nice play there. Again, the jet sweep coming across, and we can't see it on the screen, but again, nice job of getting him on the ground uh, along with Tay Carruthers. Drop of a uh, loss of five yards on the play. Second down for TSU on the day. The yardage in favor of Tennessee State, 209 to 181. So reasonably close there. TSU brings a man in motion. He sets up as a wing right side. Fake handoff. Quarterback fires, and it is caught by Tennessee State near a first down at the 40-yard line. Quinaz Turner, and on the catch, Cam Weish with his first grab of the season. Move the sticks. It's a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, I tell you, one of the most effective routes for the Tigers this afternoon has been the backside slant. You see Green look away, come back, play action, and just hit the slant on the backside. And, again, throw, catch, gain of 14, first down. Green's having a solid day from the completion percentage, 10 of 15. Still looking for that first passing touchdown, though. He'll hand it off this time. Starling's able to take the pile off tackle left side for about three yards out to the 44-yard line. Cameron Petty gets the tackle for the Racers. Yeah, Petty, the 6'1", 323-pound redshirt senior from Newmarket, Alabama, did a nice job of beating his offensive lineman and making a tackle. Not before they could pick up a gain of three. And again, Starling continuing to run the ball effectively here for the Tigers. Twins to the right side for Tennessee State. That'll be Weish ride. Johnson is in the slot. Now they're going to bring three out there for TSU. And one of those is Isaiah Green. So it's a direct snap to the running back, and it's not going to be anything here except back to the line of scrimmage. As McCauley got it, he has one touchdown on the day, but he got nothing there. Cameron Petty with another tackle. Yeah, really nice play of tracking it down. And again, Petty holding his ground, coming up with a big stop, bringing up a long third down, third and eight. Brings up third down and eight. And so far on the afternoon, the Tigers five of eight in the first half on third down. The TSU going with a different look there as they put Green out wide right. This time he'll be lined up. When a traditional quarterback look out of shotgun. Twins right, single one out to the left, wing to the right. Green wants the ball, has it in the pocket. Fires, sideline, incomplete. I'm not sure if there's miscommunication there or what, but no one really that close to the ball. And DSU goes three and out. They'll bring up fourth down here as well. Yeah, I think Green expected his receiver to cut harder to the sideline, but it did fall in between about four racers, so nice zone coverage there. What a three and out, Neil, but again, forcing TSU to punt the ball back as we see Honeycutt waiting, waiting around the racer 10 to receive the punt. They did pick up a first down. They do lead in that category as well. 15-10, so the racers behind in several stat categories, but ahead on the scoreboard, 14-10. And they only have a man back deep for Tennessee oh, State. Oh, oh it's a bad snap, but Tennessee State had it. Still on the ground. TSU picks it up, and the racers are going to have the ball back at around the 35-yard line. We'll have to take you back to the play. I was looking down to write something when the ball was snapped. Josh, take us through it. Yeah, Neil, I'm sure we'll have a replay here, but it looked like it, the ball snapped, hit the up back. Nobody really knew it. It sat on the ground for a while. The punter's waiting for the ball. And uh, a big play there by the racer. We're going to have a media timeout. Maybe we can look at the playback or the replay when we get back. We'll do that. 14-10, our score. Racers on top. We're inspired by CFSB. It's the Racer Sports Network. And welcome back. We find ourselves at Roger Stewart Stadium with 10.34 left in the third quarter. A strange event. A turnover on downs after a botched punch snap. 
uh, that we may not get a chance to see, but the racers find themselves in business as they have a first and 10 on the TSU 34. Technically, that's a nine minus nine yards rushing on the punter. And we'll see if we can get a chance to see it again. Trips left side, twins to the right side from the top. Hash, they'll fake the jet sweep, pass right side, flag on the play. Brooks catches it. It's going to go for a four-yard loss. So if it's against the racers, they may not take it. They'll take the play. Strauder with the tackle. Yeah, I got to think some type of illegal motion there, or maybe illegal shift. But uh, right here's the punt play, Neil, on our replay. Again, it hits the up back, and everybody kind of looks at it. Well, the racers have a chance. Moe jumps on it, and again, then we grab a hold of him. But again, it just, uh, again, hopefully will turn out for the racers as a, a huge play there. But uh, again, just hit the up back, fall on the ground, and, and we have what we have, which again, the racers had a first and 10 on 34, but we do have a, a flag on first down. Two bad snaps on the day for Tennessee State. One of them cost what looked like a certain field goal by Antonio Zeta as TSU comes up empty. And this one could deem costly if the racers are able to turn this into points. For the racers, it's an illegal formation. So it'll cost them five. That, that might have been one where the, was the play whistled and they had to take this one, Josh? I think it was. Again, that should have been, again, go back and have to take that five-yard penalty. Because they, they got a four-yard loss on the play. But the racers will be first and 15, 10 minutes and 30 seconds remaining. And also push it back to the 40-yard line. Racers, they have a wide out to the left side. That's Bell. Twins up top. Dallas and Brooks. They'll bring Dallas in motion, hand it to him, looks for a hole. He's got nowhere to go. Tennessee State reads the jet sweep pretty well. They've had it work once today for a bit. That's a four-yard loss. Terry Strotter with another tackle. I'll tell you one thing about the jet sweep, Neil, unless you've got uh, outstanding speed, I mean, you're playing a defense that can run, and that de a defense is definitely using their speed to, to take that play away. But what goes from a first and 15, now going to be a second and 19, and the racers are going the wrong direction. Each team under 100 rushing yards on the day, so usually the mantra of a defense, stop the run. So far, both teams have been able to do that. Rice on this second and long play has the ball, steps back in the pocket, fires across the middle, has his man. That's Satoff. He's able to struggle to a, about the 37-yard line, pick up eight or nine on the play. James Breen with the tackle. That brings up a third down for the Racers, and again, a third and a 12. The Racers were three of six, 50% on the afternoon. And again, this is going to be a long. Here you see Rice stepping up pocket. Satoff just sets down about five or six yards over the center box, able to pick up some of it, but uh, again, face, the Racers facing a third and 12. Like to get a little more if they're going to try a field goal. Bomb, he's got a big leg, too. He's kicked one from 55 yards doing so last week. From the near hash mark, Rice looks across the middle, has Bell at the 20 for the first down, goes down in a pile. They'll call him down at the 21. First and 10 racers on the conversion. Green with the tackle. Yeah, and Bell having a big afternoon. His second catch, again, none bigger than that. When we see him come across on a crossing pattern, Rice right makes his progression, comes back and finds him. And about two, two yards past the first down point mark, first and 10 for the racers. And Bell having a big game, not only catching the football, but also had that big run uh, in the first half to set up the second touchdown for the racers. First racer with more than one reception on the day. Pistol set look this time. With Castile in it running back, Bell is in motion. They show jet sweep, handed Castile, stiff arms a man. He's going to go down just beyond the line of scrimmage. They may have gained a foot. Davion Hawkins with the tackle. Yeah, didn't gain much there. Again, just enough. And really unable to get anything moving here in the ground game. So far this afternoon, the racer has been held to, uh, held to 92 rushing yards. Again, right there at the TSU. TSU has 94. Murray State, 92. Witherspoon with... His 38, and Bell with 35. Starling leads Tennessee State with 86 yards. But, again, they have some negative yards coming off of that to give you that total of under 100. Racers that go twins left, single wide out to the right, this time between the hash marks. TSU shows some stunt from the near side. Rice flushed out of the pocket. Got a lot of room across the 20, 15, 10. He'll take it out of bounds. First and goal, That's racers at the 8-yard line. Yeah, nice job again there by Rice. We've been talking about Green. Not, not, again, nice job there by Rice to get reads the progressions, doesn't see it, gets out of the pocket. And at the end of this play, you'll see an interesting TSU kind of falling over each other. But, again, nice job of Rice knowing, not forcing anything, now getting them back inside uh, the 10-yard line. It would be first and goal at the TSU 8. Rice has one rushing touchdown today. Daquan Dallas has the other score from Rice. Racers that go with a pistol set. This is Castile in. 
from the top hash mark. Rice barks the signal. Hansi Castile turns the corner right side, still on his feet, and is dragged down at the five. He'll pick up three on the play before Isaiah, excuse me, um, that was another player bringing uh, him down for Tennessee State. We'll get the number on that. That was Emmanuel Baez. Yeah, nice run there by our senior running back, Rodney Castile from Jackson, Tennessee. That time run off the right tackle. Rice saw pressure coming from the wide side. Still able to break, and again, I love the effort, the extra effort there, able to pick up about a three-yard gain, but does bring up a second goal from the five. Brooks to go wide right, Bell wide to the left side. Castiel again in it running back as part of a pistol look. Satoff is a wing to the left side. Rice wants the ball, has it. Hands to Castile, right side, off tackle. No one touches him. He's into the end zone for the five-yard touchdown run, and the Racers extend the lead. It's 20 to 10. Really nice job there by the Racer offensive line opening up, like you said, Neil, wide open. We see here on the replay, nice job of pulling and trapping. Nice job. I think it was 74 for the Racers. Nice job of, again, opening the hole. Castile saw it, got into the end zone to extend the Racer lead 20 to 10. Extra points still to come. First touchdown of the season for Castile. And Baum on for the point after. Handling the point after duties today. Weber was 8 of 9 coming into today. There's the hold. Kicks on the way. And it's good. 6.24 remaining. Third quarter action. 21-10. Murray State Horse powered by CFSB. This is ESPN Plus on the Racer Sports Network. Paint yourself a beautiful morning. On the Racers of Murray State. Murray State just capped off a seven-play 34-yard drive that ended up in a Castile four-yard touchdown run that extended the Racers' lead 21-10 as we have 624 left here in the third quarter. Johnson and Rouse back deep as Weber, ha uh, Weber has it teed up at the 35. 21-10, let's see if Tennessee State can answer. Not technically a turnover as they, on fourth down, were trying to punt it, but they sure gave up field position they didn't want to give up. There's another deep kick. This one is going to be taken three yards deep in the end zone. They'll bring it out. Johnson across the 10, 15, 20. Has some room. Slips a tackle. 30, 35, 40. Gets out to the 43-yard line. A 43-yard return. Bobby Jackson brought him down, but a tremendous return when DSU really needed it. Yeah, TSU couldn't ask for a better time at that level. A little farther, as you see here, the return. Nice job of blocking, kicking out. Now, one thing I will say, I do love the effort of Jackson, who ends up tracking him down from the backside. Weber was there to bump him out. But, again, big return for TSU as they find themselves at 11-point deficit midway through the third quarter. DSU with the first score of the game, but since then they've been outscored 21-3. to so The Ranger defense rising to the occasion, keeping the touchdowns off the board at least. Pistol sent for Green. They'll bring a wing to the left side. This is Starling with a handoff stretch play left side. Off tackle, has some room. He's across the 50. Into racer territory, down to about the 42-yard line. Alec Long rode him down. Yeah, we were looking for Starling last drive, Neil. He had 13 carries before that, before that last carry for 86 yards. That one should take him right at, if not over, the 100-yard mark for the afternoon on, on 14 carries. But that time, just off tackle zone blocking, open it up, and going to be enough for the first down. Alec Long's helmet came off, so he has to come out of the game by rule for one play. They'll bring someone in for him. Five minutes and 46 seconds remaining. Tennessee State trying to answer. Left side pass right through the hands of his intended receiver. That looked like a catch all the way. Right through the hands of Josh Truhart. Incomplete Marvin Pierre had coverage. Yeah, it looked like Truhart was going to try to make a move before he caught it. And like you said, Neil, a very catchable pass. And uh, just fell to the turf. Going to bring up second and 10. 10 of 17 on the day for Isaiah Green. 122 passing yards. Starling has his 100-yard gain. 14 carries, 100 yards on the day. Trips right side. Green has the ball. Hands to Starling again. Off tackle left side. And power is up to about the 38-yard line. A gain of five on the play. Ethan Edmondson, the tackle for the Racers. Yeah, third down again. And you hear the bells ring behind us. Five of nine this afternoon for TSU. Brings up third down and six. 
The third and six, maybe pass, maybe run, especially with Starling back there. Let's see how Tennessee State decides to play that. Their big band today on third down has been Zaire Thornton. He's going to split wide to the left side. Twins to the right. He's made big catches all day. Will Green go to him from the top hash mark? He has the ball. Hands to Starling. Grabbed immediately. He'll pick up a yard, maybe two on the play, but not near enough for the first down as the Racers picked up another tackle from Edmondson. Yeah, nice job of Edmondson there. Takes on the blocker. 78 tried to pull on him. He didn't let it happen. It fell back in and made a tackle. Nice job. Bring up fourth down. Edmondson, the Southern Miss transfer, and this gives you the idea of the weapon of Antonio Zita. He'll have it set up at the 43 for a 53-yard field goal attempt. He's already nailed one for 50. A little bit of wind stirring out there to make his case a little more difficult from the far hash mark. Snap back, hold, good, kick on the way. The distance is there, but it's no good. It's wide to the right, and the Racers will take over, leading 21-10. We'll get a media timeout with 4-14 left in the third quarter. Horse powered by CFSB. It's the racer. Yes, Hoosier Hospitality is alive and well. Come visit Evansville and you will see E is for everyone. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful sunny afternoon here at Roy Stewart Stadium. 414 left here in the third quarter. The Racers 21, Tennessee State 0 as Murray State takes possession on their own 36. Pistol said here, the Racers. Trying to add to their 11-point lead. This is Witherspoon off tackle right side. He's going to get about five, maybe six yards on the play. One of his better runs of the day. Taken down by James Green. A 21-10 racer lead. And they're looking to add to that on this trip. Yeah, now you mentioned one of his better runs. He's at his 10th carry on the afternoon. And before that play, he was averaging 4.2 yards a carry. That one good enough for about a seven-yard gain. Or a long six, bringing up second four. Razors with the ball at their own 43-yard line from the top hash mark. They'll go twins left side. Brooks and Honeycutt. Bell wide to the other side. Honeycutt goes in motion. Fakes the Jets sweep in the pocket. Rice throws the deep ball for Bell. And did he catch that ball? You've got to be kidding me. Caught. No, the other side, the official said no. It hit the turf, and it's incomplete. Is that what he said? I think that's what he said, Neil, but we're going to take a look at it right here on the screen. Bell on the skinny post. Wright steps up, and we're going to see it right here. It looks like it, let's see, it looks uh, look like it may have hit the turf there, Neil. There at the very end, Bell with an outstanding effort. And I believe, was that Harper in coverage? I think so. Step for step on that. Again, the skinny post took a shot. And I think it may have just popped out when he hit the, hit the turf. But, but again, took a shot. Had an official on this near side. He said a catch. But the official who could see the ball on the other side said, nope, it was not. Yeah, here comes back the replay, Neil. We're going to take a look. Harper and Bell looks like he has it when he hits the ground. What we can't see is on the other side. And that's where the other official that's was. That's where the other official was. Yeah, so he, he was in position to make the call. You can't ever fault that. That's what you like to see is if you're going to make a call, be in position, and he was. Empty backfield for Rice this time. Tries to hit Brooks on the slant. Another great job for Tennessee State getting a hand in there to knock it away. It was Nick Harper. What a day he's had. He really has. Again, he's been in the position to make plays, and that was a third and third and four. Going to bring up uh, Forrest, the racers, to punt the ball away. Again, the racers on the afternoon, four of, four of eight now on third down. And, and unfortunately, last week, Brooks had such an outstanding game. This week has one catch. I believe one catch on the afternoon for five yards. Johnson back deep, one return for 19 yards, but what a day punting it for Lewis Halton. Two punts for a 54.5 average, a long of 57. Just got that one away. This one's not as good. Going to take a racer bounce. It's at the 21. Did that hit a TSU player? I think it may have, but no. I think the official said dead at the eight-yard line, and it's ball Tennessee State's down. ball. Tennessee but State's one ball. of the racers said it. he thought it did, but that's not the ruling. Well, I'll tell you what, number 45 is saying he didn't. Uh, number six from TSU is saying he did, or at least talking to him a little bit about getting out of the way. So I'm not sure if that is a reviewable option, but the officials are saying that it was down. Here we go, Neil, on the, on the replay. Oh, Neil. 
Again, if we replay that, it hit something. I'm not sure what it hit, but it either, it either hit a racer player or a Tennessee State player. We're going to look at uh, again here on the replay. We can see it. It's going to clip. Oh, they, the, the video jacket that I'm looking at down there is not coming out on yeah, the field. Yeah, that is that is not. No, that's uh, if it hit anybody, it hit a racer. That's a good call on okay. the field. Nice job on our, by our replay staff. It, it's the right call. First and 10, TSU. And usually if there's any question, they're going to look at it. And the fact that they didn't send anyone out tells us they were able to see that without having to stop it and have a continued video review. So turns out it's still a really fantastic punt for the racers as they pin Tennessee State inside their 10. They'll take over at the 8-yard line deep in racer territory, but TSU did get the ball. Hand off, big hole across the 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and somewhere near midfield, bumped out of bounds, another massive run for Devon Starling. My goodness, and it gets him out of a big hole before Gerard McRae chases him down. Yeah, again, linebackers weren't, weren't there. He just gets to the first level. Sportsman-like conduct on the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Then another 15 yards the Racers are going to hand them with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So that's going to push the ball into Murray State territory back to the 35-yard line. And amazing how quickly this game is turned. The Racers had Tennessee State pinned inside the 10. Then the big run by Starling, the unsportsmanlike conduct, and Tennessee State in business at the Racer 35. 3.02 to go in the third quarter, 21-10 Murray State, but Tennessee State knocking on the door of the Racer red zone. Johnson wide to the right. That, by the way, was a 42-yard gain. That gives Starling 148 yards on 17 carries. He has it again. Stretch play left side. Steps through two defenders. He's able to get forward for maybe a yard on the play before Jacoby Hearn tracks him down. Yeah, you talk about Starling. And, again, the afternoon that that young man's having, you mentioned that's going to be 18 carries for approximately 150 yards, averaging just uh, over uh, just under nine yards per carry. Uh, but he's having a, a stellar afternoon. From the top hash mark, TSU with the man wide right. Looked like some movement up front against Tennessee State. And that'll be an illegal procedure. So that's going to be the eighth penalty against Tennessee State for 70 yards. The Racers today guilty of six for 65 yards. Yeah, and a lot of procedure penalties today, Neil. Again, false starts, uh, legal formations, and those things. So instead of second and eight for Tennessee State, they'll go second and or second and nine. It'll be second and fourteen. As the ball is now on the Razor 39. In the pocket. Green all day to throw. Rolls to his right. Fires to the right. And it's caught. And then we have a out of bounds Tennessee State. It is a catch, but they said he stepped out of bounds at about the 34 yard line. When Oz Turner the Coverage. Sorry to interrupt there, Neil. I, th I think he may have stepped out of bounds early. We got a flag coming in ahead of the officials off, so he may have stepped out, came back in. We okay. can't do that. Illegal touching, offense number five. Went out of bounds and was forced to touch the ball, coming back in bounds. That's what happened. That's a loss of down the previous spot, third down. So Josh McKeel on the spot there. That brings up third down and fourth. Yeah, and we look at the replay the here, Neil, again. I don't know if we're going to see it or not, but Green scrambles out of the pocket, and by the time he catches it, you couldn't sit on the replay, but he had already been out of bounds. And, again, once you go out, you can't be the first to touch it. That's a penalty loss of down. So we bring up from second and 14 to third and 14. So for Tennessee State, 50-50 on their third down conversions today. They've gone five for ten. Twins to the left, twins to the right. And, again, the big guy on third down today, Zaire Thornton, leading receiver for Tennessee State. Four catches for 69 yards. Let's see if they go to him again. A minute 48 left, third quarter action. The Racers down 7 0 early. If rallied to go on top 21 to 10. Snap back to Green. They've done a good job protecting him today. Pass right side, caught at the 40. Spun around out at the 30 yard line. They'll get about nine yards on that. And then. Down to the I think they line. called it down as uh, Devontae McKee came out of there with it. But it was Johnson with the catch. Yeah, McKee came out with the football, but uh, the umpire there to, to rule it down. And we'll take a look here as, again, Green's surveying, almost get to him. Flips it out to his receiver. And 
we can't see. At some point, the ball popped out, but again, the officials say it happened after the player was down. Looked like it was called down, so another long field goal attempt for Antonio Zita. This is going to be a 47-yard attempt. He has already nailed a 50-yarder today. He'll try to get TSU closer and make this a one-possession game, so it's big. Snap back. There's the kick. End over end, and it's good. And the kick is good. Your score is the 47-yard field goal is through the uprights, and with 58 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Tennessee State tacks on three. That's their first point to the half to make the score 21-13, Murray State, but it's big. It gets them within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. You know, then you look at that drive, and, and again, penalties cost them. That was a four-play, 62-yard drive. Uh, you look at the 42-yard run that uh, Starling put on, at the, and you're going to see it here on your screen, just off tackle. That was a gain of 42, and then you tacked on 15 more for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Racers. But the Racer defense bends but doesn't break, but then gives up the, the field goal, like you said, Neil, to bring it back uh, to a 21-13, 58, le 58 seconds left here in the third quarter. So Zeta today coming up big for his team. Hits from 50, hits from 47, and misses from 53. But he's a weapon. Josh, you don't really want this to be a one- or two-point game in the closing seconds and give them a shot. Uh, most certainly you don't. Again, that's what happened last week as TSU was able to pick up their first win of the season on a Zeta field goal. So, no, you want to keep this. Uh, take, you don't want that close enough that uh, it depends on his foot because he is, he is most certainly a weapon for this uh, TSU team. For the Tiger fans, you'll take that circumstance. Put it on his foot with a chance to win it. Because more often than not, he'll come through. Back deep for the racers. Honeycutt stands at the two. And here's the end over end kick by Tennessee State. Taken at the five. 15 yard line. 20. Honeycutt trips over a TSU defender down to about the 24-yard line. And that's where the racers will have it. Damare Chambers with his second tackle of the day. 50 seconds to go in the quarter, and the racers up 21-13. You know, Neil, as we look at stats, again, very similar. The racers have closed the gap on many categories, but you're still looking at the TSU with 288 yards of offense to Murray State's 227. The racers do have 120 on the ground, where TSU has 157, 149 of those uh, from Devon Starling. Meanwhile, the Racers leading rusher today, Demonte Weatherspoon, 10 carries, 45 yards. A 4.5 average isn't bad. A little bit of a high snap, but Rice gathers it in, throws sideline, caught by Bell at the 30, tries to sidestep a defender and is not going to get anything additionally out of it. He'll get six on the play. Yeah, and Bell's had a big afternoon, Neil. Again, several catches and, again, a big carry on the reverse. He's, so far, that to be his third catch for around 38 yards and, again, a Two carries for 35. Josh Green with the tackle on the day. He's having a big day. That's his sixth tackle of the game as the racers will come up with a big play to make it second down and two. From the up, upper hash mark, they'll go twins left side. Rice fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Stiff arms a man, tries to get the first down. Looked like he got it. He ran through a Tennessee State linebacker, Justin Brown, before David Dorsey brought him down. But it's about a four-yard gain to pick up that first down. Yeah, nice job of Rice, again, pulling that time, lowering his shoulder and picking up the first down. And that will be the last play of the third quarter. So we head to the fourth with the Racers on top, 21-13. Force powered by CFSB, CSPN Plus, and the Racers Sports Network. March Sunday afternoon as OVC play continues. As we begin the fourth quarter here, Murray State with a 21-13 lead over TSU, and the Racers just take possession, first and 10 on their own 31. Rice with, and this is a, looks like a mix-up. I was waiting for the flags and whistles, and here they come. As some well, issues well. along the line may go against the Racers with an illegal procedure penalty. But no, it's against Tennessee State for offside. So they came across first, according to the official. And it'll be the racer's ball on first and five. And here's a chance, uh, Josh, where a lot of times those uh, OCs like to take a crack at it downfield. Yeah, it definitely opens up your playbook, gives you a chance to come back. And like you said, first and five, a lot of good, a lot of good play calls here in this type of situation. 
Twins to the left side. Satoff is a wing to the right. They'll bring Brooks in motion, hand it to him on the jet sweep. He turns the corner, gets on his feet down to about the 44-yard line, picked up about four on the play, but a flag on the play as well as Josh Green gets another tackle. Yeah, thrown here by the line, Judge. The jet sweep, which hasn't been as effective as it has been in previous weeks, looks like we may have a hold out here on the edge. No. Well, that is an automatic, or not an automatic first down, but you add the five, and that gives you the first down with back-to-back -back offside penalties. Yeah, I didn't, didn't see that one there, Neil, but that'll work. We'll take uh, yardage any way that we can get it. And um, Coach Reed and his staff want to talk to number zero about lining up uh, in the neutral zone. Remember Houston Nuts saying, it's like, you don't have to have a lot of skill to line up right. That, you know, the other skill you have to have, not to line up correctly. Snap back, fake handoff keep up the middle out across the 50 to the 48 yard line and that's DJ Williams coming in for his first carry as a racer Jerry Jones with the stop and so the racers with Rice out of the game giving a little bit of playing time to Williams who before that was one of one with a minus three yard completion The racers at a little bit of a different look here. They'll go trips left, single wide out to the right. Williams tucks and runs. Off tackle right side across the 40. He has a first down down to the 36-yard line. Hello, D.J. Williams. Josh Green with the tackle. How about that second gear? And Rice comes back in. But look at this quarterback draw, Neil. A little pull, a little black. Look at the explosion. And running north and south, jumping over people. Nice change of pace. Rice is back in the ball game, but a nice job of of Williams coming in and doing some good things. And no scout on him, so you can't really prepare for a guy you've never seen play before for Tennessee State. But they've seen him a couple of plays. They'll go with a pistol set with Witherspoon in this time. They'll pull it back, pass to Bell. It looked like he caught that one as he sat Ryan down at the 22-yard line. First and 10 Bell. racers, another big catch for Bell as David Dorsey gets the tackle. Bell's fourth grab of the day. Yeah, Bell having a big game today. That time, like you said, he almost had to sit down on the backside post. A little bit thrown behind him, but Bell contorts his body, sets down, and comes up with a big catch, bringing all the racers down to TSU 22, first and 10. 13-02 remaining in the game. Racers with a one-possession lead, 21-13. Man in motion is Brooks. Fake the hand off to him, hand it to Witherspoon. He runs into a wall. I don't believe he got anything there. That was Davion Hawkins meeting him and getting nothing. Yeah, that time Hawkins, again, we talked about it early in the broadcast, and he's had a good afternoon. But, again, he controlled that line of scrimmage there. No, nothing going. A, a, not a loss, not a gain. Going to bring up second 10, but Hawkins, big play there for the Tigers. That gets us down under the 12-and-a-half-minute mark from the top hash mark. The racers put trips to the right. Single wide out to the left is Brooks. Rice pumps, throws, has his man. Honey cut at the six. He'll scoot into the end zone for the touchdown, Malik Honeycutt. And it's another six for Murray State on Honeycutt's first touchdown grab of the year. Yeah, Neil, as we look here, Rice throwing the Honeycutt. I love the way he reached out and caught it with his hands, got his defender turned around. Nice throw, nice catch. Rice to Honeycutt. Touchdown racers. Extending that lead 27-13, 12-13 left in the fourth quarter. Nice throw, nice catch. Fifth touchdown pass on the season for Rice. And for Malik Honeycutt, his first touchdown catch. Alton is the holder for Baum. Snaps good. The kick is on the way. Count it, 12-13 remaining in the game, 28-13, Murray State on top. We have a media timeout, horsepowered by CFSV, CSPN Plus, and the Racer Sports Network. Then spray and toss. The Shark Back Mop. Left in the fourth quarter, and Murray State just put together a seven-play, 76-yard drive that took three minutes and 37, three minutes and 37 seconds. Had five first downs. It was capped off by a 22-yard touchdown pass from Rice to Honeycutt again to extend the racer lead, 28-13, 12-13 left in the contest. On for the kick, and this is going to be a short one, kind of a pop-up fair caught at the 22-yard line for 
Tennessee State. Tennessee State. Really like the strategy there, Neil. Again, the last kickoff that they, they had uh, really cost the racers a big return, and that way you just take that weapon out of there. But you see some highlights here on ESPN Plus of the last drive. Here's Williams back up quarterback coming in with the quarterback draw. And then here you're going to see the pass for Jacob Bell on the backside on his skinny post, setting up the uh, what will be the touchdown pass from Rice here to Honeycutt. Nice throw, nice catch. Got the defender turned around. Touchdown, Racers. 12 minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. Let's see how Tennessee State answers. Isaiah Green is in on 11 of 18. Let's see if he goes to the air here. Big running day. Rolls to the right, throws, has his man. That's Weish across the 25. Bumped out of bounds somewhere in the neighborhood of the 30-yard line. Don Parker with the coverage. Yeah, you get to a point, and again, Isaiah had, Green's had a good a good afternoon, 11 for now it's going to be 12 for 19 for over 130 yards. But, again, you start getting to a point where you're going to have to score some touchdowns. Uh, Zeta has had a good afternoon, three field goals, but the racer defense has held the Tigers to only one touchdown in the contest. Under 12 minutes remaining. Big running back, Starling, 149 yards on the day. He's in there, stands to the right of Green. They set a wing to the right side. Green pulls it down, looks to throw, evades a little bit of pressure, goes to the sideline. He's just going to chuck this one away and Green live to fight another down. day on third down. Third down and five. Make some noise for your racer defense. And for this, this is a big possession here because now the racers are in a spot, Josh. If they get the ball back here, they can start to grind some of that time off the clock. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, again, a conversion here again. TSU does have all three timeouts, but again, you're talking, uh, you know, a at least a two two possession game. Again, that would be if we had touchdowns and two point conversions. But again, a big play here on third and third and five. Twins left, single wide out to the right. TSU needing to come up with something big here. Will Green do it? Throws. Has his man. That's True Hart. Leaps up and pulls it down. Fell down on the spot, but that's where he needed to be. First down at the 38-yard line. Alec Long credited with the tackle. Yeah, you see True Hart come down what we call a sit route. You know, we used to call it chain, actually. You find the first down chain, you run to it, you turn around, you catch the pass. Uh, nice job of converting there on what was a very important third and five. Starling in at running back. They'll go twins to the left side on a big pass there by Isaiah Green. Now 12 to 20 on the day. They'll bring Johnson in motion to the right side. They'll now bring him back in motion to the left side. He'll set up in the slot. Fake the handoff. Green throws sideline. It's caught by Fortnite. Thought he might be out of bounds, but the official says it is a out of bounds. It is out of bounds. Marcus Floyd with the coverage that time brings up second and 10. Yeah, nice job over there where our cameraman, again, did not get the feet down. Again, Thornton's been a, a target for Green all day, and that time just unable to get the feet down before he was out of bounds. That stops the clock with 10.36 to go. Wide out each side. Snap back. Something didn't look right, but no flags fly. This is picked off by the racers across the 25, 20, 15, 10, into the end zone for the touchdown. Marvin Pierre, are you kidding me? Another pick six for the racers, and no flags on the play. Not a flag around, Neil. We look here at our replay, and again, it's one of those that uh, nobody moved. Well, not many people moved, but I'll tell you what, Pierre moved. Got up his in -line, inside linebacker spot. Pick six the other way. The racers have a knack for turnovers, and again, what a nice job of, uh, again, not only – Probably still in this ball game, but again, finding a way to force turnovers. Well played. I, I don't know what they were doing, Neil. I, I don't know. That's the second time the ball's been snapped and people had moved. I don't understand that, but also, Josh, we've gone seasons before without a pick six. Honestly, you know, you get some interceptions, but that's tough to get a pick six. And I mean, it seems like there's one or two every week for this team. They find a way, Neil. 34 to 13. That is a big, big turnover for Tennessee State and on for the point after will be Aaron Baum. He says he's ready. Halton the holder. Halton puts it down. There's the kick. It's good. 10-27 remaining in the game. 35-13 Murray State. Another media timeout. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network on ESPN+. Plus.
contest and the racers just extended their lead 35 to 13 on a 41 yard interception return for a touchdown by Marvin Pierre the fourth such interception return for a touchdown this year for Murray State Neil that's that is impressive numbers yeah uh, yeah it is <laughs> now the racers had an outlier there one year they had uh, William Hampton I think return four in a season himself the next year, that was his junior year. Next year, he didn't do it because they never threw at him. <laughs> so, kick is caught. I think he stepped out of bounds, or was it out of bounds? He what caught it. Kick? He stepped out of bounds and caught it. That's what I thought. But the kick was out of bounds, if that's the case. Yep. So, that was it because he was out of bounds when he caught it. It doesn't go against him. It goes against the Razors, and it'll be TSU's ball to 35 with 10, 27 to go. You know, Neil, one thing you, you got to love about this racer team is they find a way. doesn't always have to be pretty. doesn't always have to be when, you know, one of those stat, uh, great stat game. But, again, you look at where we're at right now, 35-13. to 13, The defense has scored. The offense has found a way to put points on the board. Uh, a couple big plays, a couple long drives. And so TSU finds themselves with 10-27 left in a, in a big hole, uh, you know, basically three possessions away if everything went perfect for him with uh, two extra points and a two-point conversion. So a lot of football to play, but let's see how the defense can play here. A little help, too, on that drive with uh, Racers freshman quarterback, D.J. Williams, 17-yard swing pass, caught a nice play. Good move to spin away from one defender, then another on the catch out of the backfield by Devon Starling. He's been mostly a rusher, but he's able to gather that one in and uh, pick up a significant significant amount of yardage before Alec Long brought him down. Nine yeah, yards. That, that'll be his second catch. And again, ten, two catches for 10 yards and 18 carries for 149. Had a pretty good afternoon. But again, one of those days when the racers are doing it on the winning that turnover battle. Two-step drop. Across the middle, it is incomplete. A racer took a whiff at it and came up empty. Intended for Weish. That was Quinaz Turner who had uh, at least a look at it on the coverage. But now third down and one for Tennessee State with 9.49 to go. Yeah, here on the replay, Neil, again, you look at Green scanning it, going to throw it across. I think it got tipped, uh, tipped there, Neil, by one of the racers, Jerry McCray. Uh, it was almost uh, deflected off the receiver's hands, but it does bring up a third and one. TSU dials up be the keeper. Boy, I'll tell you, that's really oh, close. Tennessee yeah, State said they have it. All they had to do was get to the 45-yard line, and I believe they did make it. Scotty Humpick the tackle. I don't know. I think it'll be close. I would be oh, maybe easy. not. I thought they had it, but I don't think he they do. Oh, fourth down, he says, because, again, they had to get to the 45, and they're not on it. So they got about an inch to go, fourth and an inch. But down 21, they have to go for it, and they're going to. 9.33 to go, so Tennessee State trying to make it happen here. Fourth and inches. Green, will he keep it and try to do it? Oh. And we had a TSU player move quick. And unless the racers came offside and I didn't see it, that's going to cost him five yards. First thing I saw was Robert Lacey, the offensive lineman out of Hutchinson Community College, five yards. And you still are going to have to go for it, but it's certainly not easy to pick up five yards when inches was all you needed. Yeah, that's that's frustrating. And, again, it looks like uh, Coach Reed's going to punt the football away. I'm still looking. Okay, I didn't see him because the last guy coming out of the huddle there was the punter. But he does, so mostly out. And, honestly, if you're going to roll the dice and fake one, here's the spot to do it. Was last time they snapped it and hit it up back. So Oops. Actually, this one fumbled a little bit, but he's able to gather it in, and Mosley's able to get it away. Bear caught by Honeycutt at the 18-yard line, 18-yard line. and uh, that will get us to immediate timeout. But uh, this particular immediate timeout, since we're running one ahead, I'm going to tell you about a couple of our sponsors. And one of them. The Shark Back Mop. Same that I really love in a quarterback, 4-0. and That's my favorite statistic. That, that is the most important one, Neil. <laughs> so if, if you like the completion percentages and all the really nice things like that, you can have it. Racers with uh, D.J. Williams in it, quarterback here. We had a fumble picked up by the Racers. 
I'm not really sure what they've called here. The whistle never blown dead, but it is a three-yard loss on the play as Michael Crawford is going to be credited with the tackle there. Yeah, and what's the one thing you can't do here, Neil, and that's put the ball on the ground. Uh, and again, I didn't see exactly what happened. It was handoff. We see that Williams is in at quarterback. I just saw it on the ground, and I had the glasses on it, so there are two bodies ahead of me. Then I saw the brown ball pop loose and picked up by linemen. So second down and 12. Williams in at quarterback. He'll run out of the pistol set. Cortez Jones in at tailback. As the freshman getting some time here, Jones goes off tackle right side. Now he is a load. He pushes it forward for about maybe three yards on the play. Gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Raymond Orton with the tackle for Tennessee State as we go into the eight-minute mark. And the best thing, Neil, is the clock continues, continues to tick. Like you said, 7.50 left in the game. A good 35-13 lead. Some uh, new faces in for the racer offense. Letting that clock tick, but it is a third and ten. See with the dial up here, whether they can they continue to keep it on the ground or if they let Williams try to pick up the first down through the air. DJ Williams hasn't thrown the ball today. He's thrown one pass in his brief racer career. It was complete for minus three. This time he'll stuff it. That run up the middle. Cortez Jones is able to get a yard on the play out to All about the 19. So not much as the racers are going to go three and out. However, by the time they snap it, it'll be under seven minutes to go as Davion Hawkins gets the tackle. And Tennessee State will have the ball trailing 35-13 once the racers punt it to them. Special teams have been better today for the racers as Lewis Halton has three punts for a 52.7 average, a long of 57. He's had two of 50 plus. They come after him. He booms this one, not as long as others. Hits a racer at around the 45 yard line. So the Tennessee State is going to get their best field position off a punt that they've had all day. But they only have 6.35 remaining and three minutes remaining. We do get a media timeout, so we'll take a break with this media timeout. We're powered by CFSB. It's the Racer Sports Network. It's Jazz on. Time to go, Tennessee State with the ball as they have it first and 10 at their own 46 yard line. Under center this time, Green fakes the pass. He wants to throw the deep ball, has a man open. And it's caught at the six-yard line. First and goal, Tennessee State on the money on the catch to Johnson for TSU. Floyd the tackle. Yeah, they needed a big play, and Green prevails for him here. As he, again, he finds him on what had to be a, a long post. And again, just, just outruns his defender, makes the catch on the five, bring up first and goal. Tennessee State with 6'10 remaining, trying to get a late charge here and Pass back to Green. Green off tackle left side. Tries to power his way into the end zone. Can't make it. Looks like he's going to get down to the two before he stopped. But that'll keep the clock going under six minutes as Sylvan Turner gets the tackle. So second and three for Tennessee State. As the ball's at the three-yard line, if it matters, somewhere down the road in this game, each team with three timeouts remaining. So for Tennessee State, they're looking to get seven here and then get the ball back quickly if they can. They're going to go with their bigger running back package here, Sean McCauley and Benjamin Johnson. Johnson usually the blocking back. So they have three players in there, including Camden Edwards. Looks like they're going to try to power this in and uh, the quarterback out of the game. And movement, the racers point. So does TSU, and it's a false start against Tennessee State. And they've had multiple times today where they've cost themselves on penalties. That's 13 penalties today for 90 yards, Josh. And that is, I mean, that's, that's a football field worth of penalties almost. Uh, you know, Coach Reed cannot be pleased. He mentioned it in one of his uh, midweek conferences. But, you know, you took a quarterback, put him out wide, looked like a direct snap to McCulley. And, and, again, just with all those different things, it just did not pan out. But, like you said, there's been three times that they've been in the red zone or uh, at least close to it. They've had procedure penalties that have backed them up. And, again, the first drive of the game, like they came up short because of a penalty. McCauley in at running back, stands to the right of Green. They'll bring a man in motion this way as we go into the five-minute mark in this one. Green wants the ball, has it, pulls it back, looks into the end zone, fires it out of the back of the end zone 
That will stop the clock with 4.47 to go. But that brings up a third and goal from the eight for Tennessee State. Yeah, tried to double move out here on the outside, and, and the racer defense wasn't having anything to do. Sylvan Turner in coverage, the senior Richard, senior from Huntsville, Alabama. And so we find ourselves third and seven. 4.47, the clock is stopped with an incomplete pass. Racers 35 to 13. So we'll see. Again, they got McCulley in the backfield. You mentioned their bigger running back. Starling not in the game, 19 carries for 149 yards so far. McCauley to the right of Green. He's ready for it here on the near hash mark. Pulls it back, throws into the end zone, incomplete. Just beyond the fingertips of Trueheart, he tried to gather it in, but it goes off his fingertips into the end zone, and Tennessee State in a spot where they'll have to go for it. Gerard McRae with the coverage that time. Yeah, a little play action and just tried to slip the tight end out uh, where the linebackers were replacing. And, again, just threw a little too hot. Got a one hand on it, but unable to bring it in. So, fourth down, obviously going to go for it here. Defense trying to keep them out. You would figure if you're a Tennessee State fan, any chance to come back and win the game hinges on getting this into the end zone. Tigers need points here. The Racers... They go a long way to putting it away if they get a stop. Snap back. Green rolls to the right. Has some daylight. Thinks about it. Fires at the last moment. Incomplete. Threw it at the feet of Trueheart. No flags on the play. The Racers will take over on down to the seven. Gerard McRae again with the coverage that time. You know, Neil, there's a lot of positives from today. Some things to work on. But you look here at this replay on this fourth down play. They're trying to bring the tight end across. Going to try to sling it in there. Defense is right there. But, you know, Neil, we talked about earlier, we get on the goal line offensively, we're able to force the ball in. We get down here to the goal line on defense, and we come up with stop after stop. From the first drive, which, again, ended up on a botch snap for a field goal, to this drive here that really sealed the victory, in my opinion, for the racers. Again, they continue to find ways. They play smart football. They play good defense. They play good offense. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves, regardless of what the statistics say, ahead 35-13. Jacob Bell. Wide to the left side for the Racers, as we understand he will be one of the players we'll speak to on our Murray Lumber Player of the Game segment. Pistol set, Preston Rice hands it to Witherspoon. Up the middle, has a big run here. He's across the 20, 25, out to the 30, and we'll move the sticks with the big run. Biggest run of the day for Witherspoon, whose biggest previously was 14 yards. James Green with the tackle, but the racers out of a big hole. Yeah, nice job of blocking. Again, Witherspoon running, you see here on the replay, just right off right tackle. Everybody washes down. He breaks one tackle, makes uh, another one miss, and keeps driving his feet all the way down. And I love to see offensive linemen down the field continuing to block uh, after a big gain. Preston Rice today, 9 for 19, 151 yards. We may not see him throw it again today. Has two touchdown passes. Ran in for a touchdown, has one pick on the day. And off again to Witherspoon, off tackle left side. His job to push the pile forward at least some and hang on to the ball. Looks like he's going to get two or three on the play. Devon, Davion Hawkins with another stop for Tennessee State. But the Racers eating clock now. Going to be a timeout, I think, Neil. So Tennessee State. They'll take a timeout. I can tell you about Hophound Brew Pub. Excited to be Murray's first micro brewery, locally owned and operated. Hophound located at 317 Chestnut Street. The lunch and dinner menu features hearty, shareable appetizers, flatbread, street tacos, one of a kind smash burgers, and more. Text Racers to 31996 to receive discounts and special offers each month. Next week, right back at you here at Stewart Stadium, here in the same booth. It'll be Murray State going up against Eastern Illinois. The Panthers getting their first win of the season this Sunday. You know, and again, you look at what happened. They're getting the uh, racers starting the season 4-0. Been a while since that's happened. And, again, we know we have a shortened season, only a seven-game schedule, but going 4-0, playing against an Eastern Illinois team that got a big upset today uh, as we look at being back here, like you said, next week. Wins to the left side, single wide out to the right. And off goes to Castile. Up the middle, cradles the ball. He's going to get out to the 39-yard line. He'll pick up five or six on the play. David Dorsey with a stop. If you're wondering when the last time the Racers went 4-0, Houston Nutt could tell you because it was 1995. They went 11-0 out of the gate that year. And nowadays, the thing that makes it difficult to go 4-0, 3-0, 
is the money games that uh, FCS programs play. Not all of them do, but most of them do. The Racers have two money games lined up next year that I think those have already been previously announced against Bowling Green and Cincinnati. Uh, I think the racer schedule may be forthcoming soon, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll wait on that whenever it comes out. But those were previously announced, so the racers will get a couple of money games next year, something that they were unable to do this past year, 2020, and that really impacted not just Murray State, but impacted athletic programs everywhere when you have a chance to pull in anywhere from 500 to uh, to a million dollars and you don't get any of it. Yeah, I tell you what, again, I'm sure there's schools throughout the country that are really missing that uh, financial boost. Again, that's part of, you know, even when we were playing back uh, when I was here, I mean, you'd go, you make your travels, whether it be Ole Miss or BYU or Wisconsin, go play Ron Dane, the Heisman Trophy winner. You did that in order to, you know, supplement the, your, your program, not only your football program, but the athletic program. So you mentioned it, Neil, schools throughout the, the country missed out on that this year due to the, due to the pandemic. The player walking off under his own power, and that's good news. That's a Raymond Horton defensive tackle out of Daytona Beach, Florida. But he doesn't look to be seriously injured, just shaken up on the play. With 3.28 to go, the Racers have the ball third and one at their own 39-yard line. A 35-13 lead over Tennessee State. And TSU, remember, they scored first. If you're just tuning in, it was 7-0 Tennessee State. So this, since then, the Racers haven't given up a touchdown, and they've outscored TSU 35-6. Bell will go wide to the left side, Brooks wide to the right. They have held Brooks uh, pretty much in check today as DeMartez Brooks with just the one catch today. Racers go with a pistol set, Castile in as the running back here. Wing off to the right. Rice taking his time with a very long cadence. Play clock down under six. Handoff goes to Castile. He powers his way across the 40. All he needed was a yard, and he got a little more than that. First down, Razors. Andrews with a stop. 2.34 to go, and the Razors in a spot now where they can take it home. Yeah, Neil, it's, it's uh, again, a nice job of that. Castillo getting exactly what they need. Nice job by the offensive line. Again, we don't talk about them enough. Nestler and his group doing a nice job. Again, giving up only one sack today. Gave up zero last week. Opening the holes. And, again, like you said, but simply now it's a matter of logistics. We're going to let Rice manage the football game, take all the playcock all the way down the last second and snap it, and, and a racer win is ahead of us. Castillo. Back of the pistol, handoff up the middle. Castile off tackle left side, gets across the 45 to the 47. He'll gain about six on the play. Brought down by David Dorsey. As we go under a two minutes left in this one. You can hold on to the football, double, double, double skin it. Don't, uh, don't turn the football over. Yeah, if we're picking up uh, seven, eight yards on first down. One more should do it, and we may not be able to have even have to do that, depending on what the play clock is. 131 left on the game clock, and with the way that we're sitting here, Neil, I can't see the play clock. I can if I zoom in. The sun's on it, and that's the issue. At night, night games, these show up very well, but not so much in the daytime. In a pistol set, Castile, zigs and zags. He gets to the 45-yard line. That's a first down, seven yards. And the racers now can victory formation this one to a 4-0 start. Dorsey with another stop. So in a game that started with uh, some head scratching with TSU just shoving it down the field, uh, it's ending the way the racers wanted it to. Yeah, now again, you look at the fact, again, the racers coming out 3-0, coming in against a team who had only won one ball game so far this year, uh, kind of what uh, the racers had expected. But, again, the racers going 4-0 since, like you said, since the last time Houston Nutt walked the sideline, which uh, – Again, it's bone well for Coach Hood and his staff and his players. Quarterback Rice will take a knee. And we'll see where they put the play clock. And they do not have to stop it, uh, stamp it again. The Racers will begin to shake hands. And the thing you always do get when you play a Tennessee State team, I mean, it's a hard-nosed game. I, I know you can feel it the day after, but uh, this is one that's going to end in the victory column for the Racers. Yeah, Neil, again, what a great start. Like you said, the game itself didn't start the way we, we thought it would. But then, I said, uh, then again, we'll sit here at the end of it, 35-13. You know, again, we'll talk about the stats afterwards. Some big plays by the racers. And, again, 35-13, 4-0 start. 
No complaints here. There's the final second, and that's it. It's in the books for the Racers with a 35 to 13 victory as the Racers are able to overcome a big day from Devon Starling with 149 rushing yards with big plays of their own, including another pick six on the day for the Racer defense. This one coming from Marvin Pierre. Murray State Racer Radio Network and ESPN Plus broadcast produced by Neil Bradley and Brandon Story. The executive producer is Dave Winder, the chief technical engineer, Jeremy Wilkinson. Any use of the descriptions or accounts of this game without permission from Murray State University is prohibited. For Josh McKeel, this is Neil Bradley. The final score from Stewart Stadium in Murray is Murray State 35, Tennessee State 13. All games airing on the ESPN Network stream live and are archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.